You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Galenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 64 with Verf. Verf, how are you doing today? Pretty good, man. Just chilling. Glad to be here. Discord was down for a little bit, and we were just kind of like talking uh, about what's going on. And I, for some reason, Discord still has just a bunch of profiles that are just completely not there. And so I can't even turn Verf down. So hopefully, you guys listening, the audio level, the audio level should be pretty good. So yeah. um, anyway, Verf, absolutely. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I've been a huge fan of your videos for years, and I actually checked my follow age on your. Uh, twitter or on your twitch and it was it's all i think it's been five years i wow we need to go back but yeah i was watching you on your original ultimate i remember watching your bando streams wow yeah that's a long time ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah what, what, awesome what, what were the bando grinds for what were you going for again there was something um, you needed it's like, i think it was tacit at the time but was that it back on my, my main ultimate i was just kind of grinding a lot of pvming stuff mostly yeah you were going through like the normal yeah, yeah, yeah like route that most ultimates would take i'm assuming yeah so you've gotten into area restricted accounts extreme chunk accounts and have you always been a player like that that just likes going against the grain and not going for these generic oh no accounts? no 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 absolutely not um i mean i started like everybody else just kind of clueless in the game when I was a kid. I just kind of just did whatever. Um, and then I think when I was, I think I started playing in 2004, 2005. My, my oldest memory of RuneScape is doing the uh, holiday event with the skeleton outfit, <laughs> the Halloween event. <laughs> yeah. And the scarves. And, wait, uh, wait, was that the one with, oh wait, no, that was Halloween. Because I think yeah, the yeah, after yeah. gave the scarves, right? And stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. No, it, it was the Halloween one, and okay. I remember at the time I, I couldn't read English that well, so everything was like super hard and big struggle in the game. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that that those that, that was like one of my oldest memories, and then I think when I was around fifteen, I uh, I was really into PKing. All I did was PKing. Um. And I I actually have a YouTube channel as well that is still up, by the way. And I made videos of like, well, PKing videos. So that's what <laughs> I did pretty much until EOC. Uh, so that's like kind of like my earlier days. Um, and then old school came out and I made a main account. Just kind of get back into the game. I started as a pure and then quickly realized that the PKing was a lot different than back in the day. Yeah. And I was like, well, I don't really want to be a pure anymore, PK. So then I got into PVMing. Um, <laughs> and then I, I was pretty late with Iron Man, actually. I think regular Iron Man and, and Ultimate Iron Man was already out. And I started playing a regular Iron Man first. So that was the next step, uh, playing a regular Iron Man. Um, but then, I, I don't know, something about regular Iron Man I didn't like. I was just hoarding all these supplies in my bank. And I was like... I really don't want to do this. Like, I don't. I never have motivation to use the supplies because I absolutely hated skilling back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? This this ultimate Iron Man game mode seems interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, let's let's just give it a shot. So then I got into Ultimate Iron Man, and yeah, since then I basically never did anything else. Like, I was so hooked on Ultimate Iron Man. It, it was weird because. I had a lot more motivation and fun playing Ultimate Iron Man compared to regular Iron Man because I ha I was always forced to use my supplies. Yeah. Because you can't bank anything, right? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and, and after that comes the whole, like, area locked, you know, unicycle, unique Iron Man phase. That I just did a lot of different things. So that's kind of the process. It's like a lot of different things. Yeah, that's really strange to hear about, like, you actually wanted to play UIM because it actually looked fun, rather than, like, I want to do this because it's super challenging, in a way. Because, like, for me, yeah. UIM does not look fun. I see that, I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, like, so much Yeah, planning. I hear that a lot. 
Yeah. I, I like the planning aspect. That was like one of the appeals for me, mm. to be honest. Being limited with like only your inventory and like looting back and you know, at the time there weren't that many storage options. Early Ultimate Iron Man days. Yeah. It looked more interesting to me than like having a bank and just banking everything because I would never use anything. Yeah. So... Interesting. Is is your account right now the uh Karand Castle Extreme Chunk? Uh, Iron Man. Is that your first like Iron Man you're playing? Because I feel like every other series has been Ultimate. Am I wrong? Well, or... yeah, no. It's actually that first like unique Iron Man. Iron Man, like with the bank. Yes. Um, I did play PvP Hardcore, which also had a bank technically, but the whole like appeal to that account is not using a bank. Obviously, it's the PvP world stuff, yeah. right? It's it's just a regular Hardcore. But I didn't play the PvP Hardcore like super long i guess but yeah this is like the the actual first iron man iron man regular iron man with the bank <laughs> are you enjoying yeah. it like do you oh yeah oh yeah. yeah like it's it's very different of course because like i feel like maybe i'm like i'm seeing iron man different now like having a bank i actually really enjoy hoarding all the items yeah and like stack making super big stacks of like items i really enjoy that part of this account so there's yeah, something sure. really nice about it as a viewer too like i love when you open up your bank and you got like 500 giant keys it's just some, <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> like yeah it's, like, it, it's pretty funny i'm like like half of my bank right now is full of like crazy stacks of items that i probably can't use for months or years you know it's just sitting there and that's like amazing that is so cool for a viewer's perspective i think like, I yeah love people like that, that a lot bro. Yeah, I'm glad uh, you're kind of enjoying it. Like, do you think, I mean, I have no idea how many years this new uh, series you're working on will take. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you could probably take it. Like, it it's never ending, this yeah, one. It really it, is. To be honest, ending. like, it's literally complete the whole game, get every pet, like, the, the, you know. Yeah. It can go as long as I want on this one, really. Do you think you would, uh, for, like, a next series, whenever that happens, do you think you'd go back to UIM, or do you think you're kind of, like, in the banking um, sphere now that's an interesting question <laughs> i mean i still really like ultimate i think it really depends on the concept of the account yeah um yeah because for for area locked i definitely think ultimate is more interesting because like at least with the kremja account i had a very clear path towards my goal so and it works on both iron man and ultimate iron man the reason I'm not an ultimate Iron Man on the Chunk account is because... So imagine you're chopping locks for Nina Woodcutting, right? Mm -hmm. You're collecting all the seeds, which you need for farming. Because, you know, you could get a chunk where you need to plant, like, a magic tree, for example. If you're an ultimate Iron Man, like, you can't really keep everything. So you need to drop everything. Oh, yeah. That would be so hell. You basically have to do the same thing multiple times just to get the supplies back. And I think that's really not... I don't know. That sounds a bit... I, don't know. That I think sounds it's a bit better too to be extreme. <laughs> yeah. No, but <laughs> legit, like, um, apparently, and I've heard this, uh, apparently, mm -hmm. like, chunk accounts in general just hit the YouTube algorithm just right. There's a new chunk man out there, I've heard. I haven't actually watched any of his videos yet, and I can't even remember his name. But it's, it's, it. it's not just chunk accounts, it's just unique Ironman in general. Yeah, people. Like, those them. are just so, like, they still, yeah, you're right, though. They hit the algorithm, like, super quickly you're not wrong like it, it literally happens every time <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's like last year like we're like four or five like new you youtubers that like they did get like like 50 to 100k views on their first like episode like out of nowhere you know they, they're just there they're just there like multiple yeah yeah no it happens it happens for sure so we kind of had a few phases of like area restricted and now the phase has kind of moved into extreme chunks like what is the next like big thing you think or have we not seen it yet? I don't think we know that. I mean, you can do so... Like, the possibilities are endless on this game. Like, you know, with all these accounts. Like, there's still people doing area locked accounts too. Like, last year, you know, someone like Rakeen, Good Grief, the uh, Desert-only ultimate, uh, Fremenic-only ultimate. You know, they came out of nowhere too. And they were do they're doing good, so... It's just general... It's just in general, like... Um, unique Iron Man are just very popular. People like to watch them, yeah. Yeah. Who knows what the next thing is? Yeah, really. I feel like it, I feel like maybe something more like custom made modes, custom made that we, uh, with something that requires something outside of RuneScape, mm. like a tool or kind of like the generate task. 
concept. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, where you like roll a, a wheel kind of. Or like yeah, a, you have like a spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I yes. always confuse the wheel accounts with the generator, but they're pretty much the same. It's just like generating a task that you need to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah those, who knows? It's, it's very exciting, though. Very those exciting. are probably like the least uh, interesting to me. I'm just like, damn, that I, that just looks exhausting for the creator. And I'm just like, uh, like, I don't know, like some of those. But I love I love the open the openness of what you're doing it, as much as it feels closed you do have so many options and so many like different things like it's not like oh i have to do this task right now you can you have a variety of things to do in your chunk right it's kind of cool yeah yeah um there's actually been talk of, of an official game mode coming out that would be like a chunk man where you physically like cannot leave a chunk and mm -hmm. you you could set yeah. it for like extreme to easy or whatnot what do you th what do you think about that? Like coming out with official game modes about area restriction and other things. Uh I personally think it's not gonna work. Well, I mean, first of all, they will just say it's not worth that death time because like five people are gonna play it. Like people proposed hardcore ultimates before, and they literally said on live stream that it's not worth that time to make a game mode like that. Yeah. Um, I mean. You know, it will be people will play it, but I, I partly agree with that. I think partly the problem with like area locked, doing official area locked accounts, that there are certain exceptions that you make, you know, to make an account like that work. For example, on the Kremja account, you buy a POH, yeah, which you cannot do on Kremja, and there's all kinds of like little exceptions, and everyone has their own preference what they want to do and don't want to do on an account, right? Yeah. So I like the free. I like that that aspect of freedom so if they do this officially it's kind of like i don't know i i, I just you lose that think freedom. it would yeah maybe maybe and it would be too complicated because people are gonna say well, i want to do this but i want to have a poh and i don't have a poh right now in this game mode so yeah or like you want to train herb lore but you need to go do druidic rituals yeah druidic rituals are very like you know that's a very most people do that as an exception on yeah. area locked accounts so yeah that's just some examples but yeah i think that would make stuff a little complicated yeah, you're right. It's uh, it's a cool thing, and I've uh, w one of the reasons why I bring it up is simply because of that suggestion for Mithril Man, the the mode that is basically playing as a main, but you can't use the GE. And Ooh, that's pretty cool. It's like uh, you're basically you have your own mini community where you can trade every other Mithril Man in the game, but you can't participate in the actual like economy. And if you were, if you were to like team up with uh mains you mm -hmm. it would be like iron man where like you would have to do all the damage basically to get the drop but with a mithril man then you could team up and do boss stuff so it's uh, literally like, just a giant group iron man yeah like an official group iron man kind of right mm -hmm. right yeah. that's pretty cool yeah it's like it's like cool but i always wonder what the division of the player base will be like if you keep coming out with new modes yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, leaks is a good way to introduce things like that, in my opinion. Like, doing something... Well, I mean, they kind of already did area locked, right, in leaks. Mm -hmm. And people loved it. But it, I think it's better if they keep it, like, temporary game modes, in a way. Yeah, you're probably right. That's kind of what I was thinking about Group Iron Man. Like, test Group Iron Man on leagues, on, like, some sort of, like, league. And then see if people really want it. I don't know. But I think yeah. Group Iron Man, like, I always see Group Iron Man as it's dying or something like that. But there are <sighs> still a lot of people that are enjoying it. I just don't see it often because they're silent about it, you know. They're just quietly enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think it's great for, like, new people that want to play together with friends and are really a fan of Iron Man. But I think it didn't get as much hype as people maybe expected. Yeah, that's it. And that probably has to do with content creators, right? So, like, what is everyone doing in the game? Maybe. I I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if this is true, but... Yeah, the the cool thing is, is I can't even remember who I was talking to about it, but the potential for Group Iron Man is still there, especially when it comes to area restrictions or some sort of YouTube series. Because you can yeah. have, like, two accounts on the other sides of the map, and they have to, like, do a chunk man to get to each other, you know? Yeah, I've... Yeah, I've heard that people talk about this for sure before and ask me as well if I wanted to do something like that. So, 
and no one has done it yet so but yeah, yeah i i personally don't see myself do something like that but you're more like a solo potential. player right is that the i guess so i guess so i just for example like doing an like people have recommended well people have talked about something like a group region locked series or something like everyone starts in their own region but i don't i just i don't see the point <laughs> yeah it's like over because like too. Well, yeah, but like, well, like, what am I gonna do? Playing Karamja again, but then easier because I get everyone's supplies. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. That's true. it's cool. Like, I've I've actually talked about this topic a while ago, and I think it's really cool for like if you have like a friend group that want to do something like that, but want to make it a bit easier, maybe. Mm. Then yeah, you, you can totally go for something like that. I think it'll be really fun. Yeah, but I guess I'm just more. Yeah, maybe maybe I like to do more solo stuff. I guess I'm not. Yeah. I guess. I think I'm the same way. Yeah. I don't know. Doing team stuff. Even doing TOB, Next, and stuff like that, I still am just like, ugh, this content's fun and all, but I much prefer to just be on my own and do things solo. I don't yeah, know. I, I think also another solo. thing I forgot to mention is it's hard to find a group of people that plays the same amount of hours I do is in the same time zone. You know, it's like, yep. that's, that's hard, that you won't know? burn out after a month. Yeah, right. And then, yeah, and then maybe in your case with, like, the group bosses, it's kind of, like, hard maybe to find teams sometimes or consistent, like, time zones or teams. Like, I fear, I fear that sometimes. Yeah, but. that's a good point. So, I'm going to go to the Twitter topics. Uh, we got quite a few. And, uh, well, I guess we'll kind of just go from the top, at least what my top is. I don't know how Twitter works with organizing... <laughs> the the topics but we'll just go from uh what i see first tans fang asks when you set out to do karumja only inferno how confident were you that it was possible was it heavily researched before or a goal that you hoped would be possible eventually and i also want to ask you to just preface the whole karumja only because some people haven't watched your series so what was right. karumja only right so when i started the account i kind of I mean, I didn't have the Inferno as a goal. That was not a goal at all. Like, I did not even think about it because in my mind, I was thinking, well, there's no way I can do Inferno with, like, a U Longbow and Green DI Chaps or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, no shot. So, like, nah. But, you know, I was kind of, like, just... I was just having a ton of fun playing an account like that with that play style. And I was just kind of working on goals and, like, oh, Fire Cape is cool. And, like, you know, that that's all these, like, really... You know, area locked goals, I guess you can call them very... You do things that you never do in the main game, which is really fun. Like, getting certain items is really fun. And um, and I I just kind of played like that for a few months. And then at one point, um, I kind of started brainstorming. I was like, hmm, is the Inferno actually possible? Because people started asking me and I was kind of interested in it. And there was only one way to make Inferno possible inferno possibility and that's if i was able to do hunter catch every single impling um and there's one like actual training method in karamja and that's the horned grax um and to catch them you needed a teasing stick and there was no there's no way to get a teasing stick on karamja so i considered maybe making an exception for it um and someone mentioned i think it wasn't a like a poll i did on youtube or something someone mentioned Maybe you should just, you know, ask Mod Ash if he can just put it in a game. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I was like, what? Like, huh? And I was like, you know what? Like, you know what? Let's just, Why let's not? just message Mod Ash. Like, let's tweet him, like, for fun. And I made the whole story, like, oh, yeah, like, people in Karamja need the teasing stick to catch the beasts. And like, I don't know, I just, you know, it's kind of like a joke, you know? I was like... Like yeah, the the, yeah. the the civilians of of Karamja, they they need to make those like they need to like hunt armor with the heights. Yeah, they need to hunt the beasts, yeah. right? And eat like. <laughs> and I made this whole like story and kind of like made a fun tweet. And Mod Ash was like, "Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea." I'm like, "I'm like what?" I was like, "Nah, no shot." I was like, "Wait, what?" So he was, he was actually kind of like, you know, he didn't like. I expected him to just say no and move on, right? Yeah. yeah. But he was like kind of interested, and I was like, "Okay, I'm like, okay." So a few weeks past after that and uh, someone came in my twitch chat and he was like yo there's a teasing stick on the beach in kremja i'm like no <laughs> sure, nah, you're, you're, you're joking dude like nah 
So I walked to the to the beach and I saw the teasing stick and I freaked out. Like I was like, no way. Oh like, my god. So basically Mont Ash put that teasing stick there and you need the teasing you need to catch one for the diary, so you know, part of the reasoning was like, well, if there's a teasing stick, you forgot the teasing stick doing the diary task, you can pick one up, you know? Yeah. Convenient, I guess. But yeah, I, I would have probably made an exception for it if it wasn't there. But but because of that item, the Inferno became possible. And I started brainstorming the whole process towards the Inferno. What do I need? I have Hunter now. Um, I can catch, you know, 55k of these things. Get 99. Catch Lucky Ims. That was kind of like going through my head, right? Yeah. I made I made a video about this as well as well actually like the whole like plan, um, but to be completely honest, I had no idea about I wasn't very good at the inferno, so I just made this whole plan assuming I was gonna do it, and yeah I, I had I mean no I was not confident at all at the inferno uh, being able to do it I just told myself I was gonna do it someday, <laughs> basically and that's kind of the story you know yeah. Isn't that kind of funny how you can almost convince yourself that you're going to do something? And then if enough time passes, you actually have like fully convinced yourself that I need to do this. It's Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I was thinking about it like a lot. I was like, damn, I'm like goal after goal. I was getting close to the Inferno. I was like, well, shit, now I actually have to go and do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck, what did I get myself <laughs> into? <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck, man. I, but what's I'm funny? I have to do yeah no go, I, go, I was go, gonna go. say like the funny part is is like you could do the opposite too and just convince yourself i will never do the inferno and then you would eventually convince yourself that it's impossible or like you're not gonna do yeah. that so it's funny how they both kind of work yeah I mean, I mean a lot of people are telling me like dude you're you're never gonna do this and that also kind of motivated me to do it because i was like yeah. well there's definitely a way to do this so i'm gonna prove you guys that's... like i remember the first time in that like in that video i mentioned i was going to get a rune crossbow from lucky Ims. And people are like, no shot, you're never going to get one. Yeah. That's way too rare. Like, you're only going to catch... Like, I've never seen a Lucky Imp in my life. You're going to only catch Lucky Imps in Karamja for this one specific item. Yeah. A lot of people didn't believe in it, so... How how many Lucky Imps was it? Uh, I think I caught around 120 for my first one. Damn, that's so many Lucky Imps. And see, like, these things... Are, and the same thing was settled. Like these things just aren't feasible without a community behind your back, like helping you. With yeah, I agree. Stuff. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. playing it like super, super, uh, you know, with a, a ton of quote unquote uh, integrity and having to search out lucky hymns for like a decade? Like, Jesus. Well, it's actually a funny topic because a lot of people were not all well, kind of against it. I guess they were like, "Whoa, he's using alts to like complete his goal." Like ruined you know yeah. it's like well you know I, I i can have the help of people you know speed up this world process and get me the items from these lucky ims or i can do it myself and the series will last five years longer i mean it's your choice yeah. right like i just i kind of just i don't do this to impress anyone i just want to make videos i like to play this account you know if i can speed up a goal i'll do it you know yeah and I was kind of, I really liked the whole like lucky and playing meta like the whole process of everyone helping me it was super awesome and fun like yeah that's cool getting the community together but yeah something like that I mean if I would have done it all alone I wish I could have done it alone but it would literally take like five plus years yeah so. it's it's just tough when you are given an option to alt it's like uh, I mean I see just. A simple, simple um, example of it is the tanner up in the crafting guild. When you want to tan your D hides, mm -hmm. it's like, are you literally just going to refuse to have an alt stand there and make it like so much faster and so much more convenient? Or are you just going to like suffer? Wait, does the alt like make the character stand still? Yeah, he makes him stand right in the corner, right when you go oh. up the stairs, he's adjacent to you. And he's there permanently. He's not wandering around, going around the staircase and stuff. Did you use that? Yeah, I always use that, and I'm also uh, like against alting, which is horrible <laughs> because people will just flame me, me for like doing anything with some form of alting. But yeah. of course, it's like a, like I'm kind of like you, like I don't want to do that, but it's just so right. much better that it's yeah, like I feel and the it, same it's way. not against the rules. So it's like, ah, shit. Did you did you ever use alts for your corp grind? I used alts for my corp grind for like four days i uh hey. i don't know if you know resh in the community he was like an inferno god 
He had an Iron Man that was super up there, and then he just uh-huh. basically dropped everything over except for corp equipment. And then he would just let people, well, trusted people to use his account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, streamers and people. and yeah. yeah, so I was using his account for, like, five days. I got such a headache from doing it. And this is back when, <laughs> that, this yeah. is back when, like, the, the meta was literally just to use alts because you were just drastically wasting time by not doing it. So Yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, the thing is, I did a lot of corp in my ultimate, and I never, I refused to use an alt on something like that. Yeah. Right? But then I, I'm totally okay using, like, I'm okay, I guess, using alts to speed up unique Iron Man goals. Because no one, like, it's literally, I lock myself to, like, in this case, a chunk or, like, an area. Like, there's no high scores. There's no no real competitive aspect, I guess. It's just, like, time-saving. So, like, I make faster videos on content. Yeah, it's, you know? it's content-based. You know? Yeah, kind of. But, yeah, like, I there were there are certain times when I absolutely refused using alts and I hated it, so... On my main ultimate, for example. So yeah. see, like I'm a person that is against alts for yeah. iron modes, but like I just, it's so weird because I'm so wishy washy with it. It looks like from an outside perspective of like you'll still use alts, you know, if it's convenient enough or if you like approve of it, but you won't in other situations. But mm-hmm. like I want the game mode to be catered toward being solo only, you know. And yeah, when like, things yeah. aren't against the rules, it's really hard to not do that because you're saving so much time. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and be, if there are no rules for it in the game to get banned for it, then it's like, damn, you're really making this tempting to... Kind of personal use. preference, right? Yeah. And some people like it, some people don't, which I totally understand. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you did eventually get the uh, Infernal Cape on that account. And how was the feeling? It was exactly one year ago, this day. Wow. I think I just ended the stream right now, like around this time. <laughs> That's sick. Um, I mean, I felt super, like, I felt happy that, I didn't feel happy I got it. I felt happy the series was over and I could do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like, yeah, like, I, I mean, it was super satisfying, you know. So super satisfying. This is something I just wouldn't know, but I'll ask you. Um, mm-hmm. When you're kind of rounding off a series like that, does it kind of stop, or is, is there like a moment in time where it stops, or where it starts losing your audience? Sort of. I, I guess I'm trying to use stops and starts at the same time, but it's like, is there like a point where people lose interest in the series? Oh, you mean like, would I stop a series at some point when I notice that? less people are interested i guess what i mean is with that series you said you were like relieved yeah, yeah. to be able to move on was that partly oh, oh, because see. maybe the series was like getting less interested or was it at its actual no, peak no, no, and no, you no, were no. just excited to move on no no absolutely that has nothing to do with youtube or v- videos or whatever mm. i i mean i was literally doing inferno for four months just practicing <laughs> with this stupid fucking setup with rune throne axes in the waves and like uh, it was just rough Jesus Christ. and i was like you know after you know, after I've completed it, I was like, well, I don't have to take a step into the Inferno anymore for, like, months, you know? I was, like, happy. Yeah, that's... Kind of like, you know, that that's mostly why I was, you know, happy that I was finished. Because I could do something... You know, I could do Slayer in a game or, like, I don't know, like, Skilling or something, like, more chill. You know, because Inferno, doing Inferno all day gets gets old. Yeah. With a setup like that. So I was just kind of, like, happy that I was done with doing that. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> with, um... With these chunk accounts, though, I guess going back to that thing, is mm-hmm. do you kind of base it off of audience retention and stuff like that? Where, like, okay, maybe we can... like For, for example, your chunk account is actually endless, and you could just keep playing it forever. Right. Is there a point? I mean, well, I mean, I play the... If I really enjoy playing an account, mm-hmm. then I'm going to make videos about it and stream it and play it. If, you know, I've played accounts in the past that didn't do as well, but I still played them because I like them. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to stop playing an account because it doesn't get views. Okay. Because I don't think long term, you know, that's something that can kind of, I feel like that's something that can burn you out <laughs> yeah. as a content creator. Like, you need to do something you actually enjoy doing in the game. And, you know, there's going to be people that might not like it. Like, to give you a good good example, when I first introduced the Kramja only idea to the community, like, 30% of my peop- like community at the time said, no, don't make videos about this. It's shit. Like, you're going to do three episodes, and then you're going to quit, and, like, no one cares. 
So, yeah. you know, and I didn't care like what people said. So I just made videos and just yeah. did my thing. And then people really started liking it. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I need to ask just as a fellow YouTuber, of course, I'm first of all, I got to say, I'm really proud of like how much you've grown. It's actually crazy because I remember watching you before I ever started streaming and stuff. And you're just a small content creator at the time. Now you're like one of the big dogs. It's cool. It's cool to see. So um yeah i guess <laughs> <laughs> no it's like actually crazy like i mean you have over a hundred thousand subscribers you're like at 120 right one hundred twenty thousand subscribers that's insane you might not see it but like i see it because it's just it actually is cr that is a crazy well, yeah the number goes up i guess <laughs> yeah and you never really <laughs> see like the i mean you're just there for all the growth so it's just not like crazy but for me I mean, I didn't mm -hmm. even really watch your videos much. There's so many creators that I don't just keep up to date with for the most part. Yeah. But then I started like checking out your channel more and I was like, okay, Jesus Christ. Like this guy's actually, this is one of the household names now, Verf, you know? So I, d I can't even remember what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll, <laughs> we'll just move on to the next uh, topic. Sounds good. Flo asks, hi, Verf. Thanks again for the root rune kite shield RNG luck. What is your favorite tile on Karamja and why? Hmm. Grats on the rune kite shield. I remember that. Um, favorite tile. It's either <laughs> gonna be probably the you know the tile I landed on when I got the inferno cape, or the teasing stick tile. I guess those are two <laughs> good options. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like funny. that. I was going to say, like, <laughs> hiding behind North Pillar in the Inferno. It's like your favorite tile. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, Flomple asks, Hey, Verf, if you could have had Jagex add one item spawn to Karamja region to help with your Karamja-only UIM, what would it have been? <laughs> also, do you consider cereal to be a soup? So I think we already got the first one, but if you have any other stuff to add. One item. Hmm. So, the obvious answer would be, well, I, I guess Ancients isn't an item, right? So that, that doesn't, I would, like, people have asked me this before, and I would be like, well, Ancients, because then the Inferno is, like, a lot easier. But that, you know, that completely defeats the whole point, yeah. right? I mean, like, I guess a Tebow or something. I don't know. Something good for the, for the Inferno. Like a Tebow <laughs> bush, maybe, just added to <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> uh, what about yeah. like a what about like a chinchampa spot? Yeah, chins would be good. Chins would be yeah. good for for nibblers. Yeah, that would, that would work. Do you consider cereal uh, to be a soup? No, no. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's not. It, it's honestly very strange how popular cereal is with when you think about it. It's just a bunch of milk. And then some grain, like in it. Do you like what order do you eat it? Do you like put it in first and then put the milk in, or C yeah, cereal first and then milk? Of course, I'm not a psychopath. Okay. Or wait, are you? Are you a psychopath? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I put it in first too, and then yeah, yeah. the milk, the milk second. Yes, it feels weird pouring cereal into a full bowl of milk. That is very strange. It just like floats on the on the milk, like yeah, just, uh, like... it's not right. It's not natural to do that. I haven't ate cereal in probably years, actually. Yeah, I don't really eat cereal anymore. And that was like my childhood, like, favorite thing to eat. Kellogg's face, like Kellogg's times. Yeah. I yeah. loved, uh, I think my favorite cereal was Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That shit slapped. But <laughs> anything, anything cinnamon was just amazing. Yeah. Okay. Ariadna asks, what was your favorite skilling method on every unique Iron Man you played? Favorite one on Karamja, favorite one on Chunk, favorite one on free-to-play UIM, favorite one on Rilkal? Um, Karamja, I think the Ergo method was pretty interesting, using anti-poisons on the green voodoo dudes, which gives you Ergo XP. That's so I don't know, did you know that? <laughs> I, I do remember seeing, uh, it must have been from you, showing yeah. that, like, what? How how was that even a thing? <laughs> yeah, it was like two point five k per hour. It wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird, though. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But that was kind of cool way, you know, cool way to do airboy. Um, on the chunk account, I mean, I made 
almost 100,000 chocolate cakes. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's uh, nuts, by the way. You just slap chocolate on a on a cake, <laughs> and you get a cooking XP for it. <laughs> a lot of people actually don't know this, but yeah, that's how you make chocolate cakes in a game. It's funny how you don't even need to turn it into like chocolate dust, even. You just literally yeah, you just slap it together, like <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Aren't they like aren't the Jagex mods like against combining two pizza halves, or have they done that? I can't actually remember. Yeah, you know what's funny? Yeah. Making chocolate cakes is so dead content that there's not even an animation where you use it together. <laughs> you just stand there and do nothing. You make chocolate cakes. They that really tells you it's like that. No one does that in the game. They really should add an animation to it. I really loved when they started adding animations like battle staves and other things. So Yeah, like the, the wines. Was that like... When did they add that? Yeah, wines and battle staves I think were added at yeah. the same time. And I think some fletching as well. There was something fletching related. Uh... Yeah, I think it looks cool. It was like two years ago, probably, or something. Jeez, and then, three. I know. to finish the question, the real call account? Um, hmm. I guess doing only barehanded implings for Hunter XP was kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. Uh, do you watch impling only? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was actually... I actually introduced her to that account. Well, not introduced her, but she started watching my streams around the time when I was doing the impling grind on the Kremj account, and she helped me catch a lot of implings. Wow. And that's kind of like at that point she kind of started liking imps a lot, I guess. But that's I think she so caught like 100 out of 600 lucky imps on the Kremj account for me. Found like found them in game for me. Jesus. Yeah. That's all. Aw- yeah, she um. Really she cool makes account. she makes Piro Piro look really fun, but like that that kind of idea of like using imps for everything sounds really cool. But then I step into Piro Piro and then I'm like, oh yeah, dude, I know I, it's like I, it's I, not fun. No, I know, uh, <laughs> and it honestly could be fun. I think part of the reason why it's not fun is because there's a shit ton of bots. The wheat is just absolutely obnoxious to get through, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know, I just. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> yeah, like, again, it sounds amazing in theory for me. I'll be like, oh, that yeah. sounds cool. And then you start going there, and you're like, okay, never mind. Cancel the series. Do, yeah, that's Do you like the, the impling meta for, for clues? No. I am actually against having them ever released clues from implings. They, they could have released clues from implings, but then they would have had to make them untradeable, in my opinion. Again... Oh, yeah, interesting. So, mains can buy, like, jars and stuff, right? Yeah, so, like, it would just never be the meta because you would have to manually catch your own imps. Um, Yeah. Then it would have good clue scroll chances. So, like, there would be... The only benefit to it would be that there is, I guess, some form of stackable clue at that point if you want to take all the time to go gather them yourself. But, yeah, I think that was one of the worst updates of all time, making implings tradable and giving them insane... Uh, clue scroll rates, especially at yeah, context. You, you're kind of the like I remember you kind of as a clue guy. I think the first time I saw you pop up somewhere was I think something to do with elite clues. Is that like is that yeah. possible? Yeah, no, that really <laughs> is it. I mean, I used to be, a, I still am a clue scroll enthusiast. It's just there's yeah. so many things to do in this game now where I get distracted and like for example the arcane sigil. I just realized I needed to go get an arcane before raids three. Mm-hmm. I was, like, at 1,100 KC or so. It had been, like, you know, 200-ish kills since my last sigil. I was like, I'll just quickly go get a sigil. Oh, like God. A month. Yeah, that took, like, yeah. seven months. Dude, <laughs> your, your dry seek was crazy. Yeah. It gave me some bad flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. It looked yeah, I mean, amazing, though. Oh. oh, dude, the feeling when you got that. I, I, you were like, I, I like your reaction. You're like, yes, like, screaming, <laughs> screaming, like, oh, it's so good. It just look. It's just like, and people always say this as well. They're like, "You'll get it when you least expect it." First of all, I don't believe that, but I look back at my previous drops and I'm like, "Yeah, every time oh, yeah, I get no, the drop, I, I am not thinking about getting it." Yep, yep, I agree. Every time. Yeah. Like the like when I got the arcane, I killed almost eighteen hundred, right? And I streamed like ninety percent of all the kills, mm-hmm. and I decided to kill one before I started the stream, and I got it. And I was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> like, like what? 
Like, no of way. Of course like, that would happen, you know. Yeah, like I wasn't even thinking about it. I was like, well, we just do a quick one when I'm eating, like yeah. you know, start the stream in a bit and then I just get it. So, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I I got that on stream because I do a little bit of corp off stream, probably around you, like 90 percent's on. Yeah. I'm just glad I got lucky and got it on stream. So Yeah, I was really happy to see that. <laughs> yeah. Um Tina asks What's his favorite chicken leg flavor? Oh, God. He'll know what this means. Also, does he ever think he'll bond up his max UIM for completionist goals? Chicken flavor. So, <laughs> we, were in, uh, we were in like a Ultimate Iron Man bingo a few years ago. And uh, we just, I don't know. Like, I don't know how this even started, but we just started typing the chicken poultry emote thing in the chat <laughs> i don't even know like it's it's so random you know but yeah it, it's just funny like every time we are in a chat somewhere like we type that <laughs> what about um damn, my, goals I, the UIM? I, I don't see it happening like i haven't logged in on that account in like three years i think well maybe i did like it one inferno cape or something but I now nah, like nowadays I'm just more interested in the whole unique Iron Man thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like the normal ultimate is kind of like a normie ultimate for me at this point. It's like I don't know. I like to try new things, do you know, step up the grind. I don't want to like sit there and do raids all like because I had like three big things left kind of at the yeah. time, like raids, corp, and and tob, and I really didn't want to do raids for like two years straight. And that's my content. And as so, a UIM, that sounds not yeah. enjoyable that's my so opinion, I kinda, yeah no nah, i just kind of yeah you're right i mean that's kind of why i never really continue with the account because I, like i kind of achieved everything i wanted i got the inferno cape by max i got some pvm stuff like that's kind of like i was happy with that you know and at the time i was already playing a kremge account right so i was already like super deep into this unique style so i was way more attracted to that yeah and i think just as a content creator exclusively like i I think that's uh what viewers want to. For me, like watching, I don't know. There is something more interesting about something that's never been done before. What you're doing, the extreme chunk in Karend, rather than yeah. just watching an end game UIM. So yeah, I think so too. As a content creator perspective, yeah. What do you think about settled? Uh, did, isn't he sort of? I mean, I know he's coming out with a new series and stuff. I think he hasn't mm -hmm. come out with that yet uh yeah i might be wrong but um he also was playing his ultimate for a little bit and got like his infernal max and stuff yeah 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 so that was actually yeah i think he surprising. i think he was playing that during swampletics kind of like as a side thing when he's working on stuff yeah that must have been it because it yeah. wasn't after the series ended i don't think he, because he stacked content for months and did, just didn't show it he had it all like prepared yeah yeah by the way that's crazy to me uh I don't even know how to phrase this question I'm going to ask, but mm -hmm. what do you, like, what is the perfect time, uh, how do I word this properly? What is, like, the, uh, the, what's the best schedule to upload videos? Is it, like, once a week, once a month, once every day? Mm. Like, what, what do you, what have you found super optimal or what you like let's the most? Let's see, let's see. Um, I mean... I think, I mean, quantity is good, right, on YouTube because YouTube likes quantity, but with RuneScape content, I mean, I shifted more towards fewer uploads, more content and more quality, kind of. And, like, I mean, I kind of have no choice anyways because, because of the nature of the accounts I'm playing. For the last few years, I've been doing these super grindy accounts, so I can't do an upload every week, right? Mm. But I think, like, yeah it's, it's a hard it's a tricky question because i guess no one really knows right but in general the more you can upload as long as the video stays quality is good but like i don't think uploading every single day is a good good idea though mm -hmm. so i would say once a week is like once twice a week depending on what like if you're doing like a progress series once a week i think is good yeah and so, you can do like yeah so how do you decide when to uh when uh, you think you've put in enough content for the next episode because, like, yours are usually, um, like, a, a week to 
two weeks it feels like at least some episodes feel like it's been like two weeks since the last episode but maybe I'm yeah wrong. like sometimes it sometimes it takes two weeks sometimes three weeks um it, it like i kind of try to get in this like right now at least with the chunk account i try to get like a big item or big goal out of the way and put that in a video mm -hmm. so there's something like new in there yeah. right I, that's kind of what i do now but i kind of just have a goal in mind and then if i complete the goal i make a video and like i never put clips in my timeline if i don't if i know i don't have a video yet in okay. terms of content so like i always for example, I uh, with like a good example is the hill giant goal I did, right? Mm -hmm. Killed X amount of hill giants and did the totems. So I knew after I would finish that, I would make a video. Yeah. Because it's kind of like a good like subject of the video, I guess. Yeah. I focus a full video around that goal. So, yeah, it's usually content based, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it's just interesting because I always wonder because I'm a I'm a smaller YouTube relatively, and I'm like. I wonder what these guys that have made it pretty big, like what 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 is their like game plan nowadays? Because settled, I feel like uploads a video once a month, and he mm -hmm. just kills it every time. But it's like, damn, why don't yeah, you just but... upload like every other day or something? Like if you could get all the views you get, but again, I if mean, you're uploading too much, then it's diluted. So it's like, where's the perfect I think, balance? I think a good advice is to not look too much at views, mm -hmm. because. I remember when I started doing YouTube earlier, like when I was still kind of early into the YouTube thing, I compared myself way too much with people on YouTube, like all the people that were making videos and I don't know, you just kind of need to do your own thing, find your own thing to do. Like some people upload every day and it works and some people do it and it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Settled has a lot of subs, so he will get a good amount of views per video, regardless of what he uploads at this point, I feel. And uh, he has, like, a big fan base, and, like, you know, people probably watch what, anything he does at this point, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's really... I don't know, like... I feel like he's also very, uh... Uh, what's the word? Perfectionistic with the things he does and uploads. Yeah. I don't think he's the type of guy that just spams out videos he just so he has yep. videos. He does so. not. It's tricky. It's tricky. He's very into quality. And it, that's what's really cool. Uh, and I admire right. that about YouTubers is when they can really hold off for a video. But when you you know that their next video is going to be amazing. Yeah. It's really cool. You set the bar high for yourself, though. Yeah. And that's got to be stressful in it, in and of itself, I think. Just yeah. setting that bar too high sometimes can just be kind of daunting. It's like, All yeah, right, I, tr I tried. More. I mean... I did try different styles of editing as well. Like, for example, I don't know. Have you seen the Real Call movie thing that I did last year? I watched like 10 minutes of it. And then I think yeah. I left the video, just fully honest. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, that video took like seven months total to make Jesus. just for one video, right? That's insane. <laughs> yeah, like I know that. So I, I've done different styles, right? Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a risk. And I could have just split that wall, like that thing up in 10 episodes yeah right so yeah what, but what i decided to do something now? yeah I, I, I just wanted to do something different you know try something new i like to try things different things on youtube too like i changed my thumbnail styles i changed my formats of the videos sometimes like i tried a lot of like longer format videos last year um just try a bunch of different things you know what did you learn from uh doing a seven month project and then uploading it in one video do you like regret not having split it up or were you oh no i mean it was my own i will i did it on purpose i did not split it up on purpose right the, the whole goal was kind of the goal with that video was to make something editing wise that i was something to look back on and be proud of something yeah. extra quality right it's kind of like a, it was more so a personal project okay um and uh yeah it was it was stressful though editing the thing like it was really stressful to put that much content in in like a good formatted video that's a, something I have to say, though. It's much easier to just make a progress video with a few weeks of progress. And, yeah, a lot a lot easier to, easier to structure. What were what did you anticipate that video? Like, what did you anticipate the reception of that video being? Did you expect it to get, like, a ton of views? Um, did you hype it up at all? Or were you just going to... Yeah, I did, I did hype it up quite a bit. I, I had, like... Do you, do you know uh, Legends Art? Yeah. Yeah, he made, like, a poster for the series, kind of. Okay. Like, a for the account, and I mentioned it a few times beforehand that I was going to do a big project, and 
Um, but I, I mean, I did expect it to do decent since it, it was an area locked account again. Mm -hmm. Something that people kind of, I, I feel like a lot of people subscribed for the Kremja account. Yeah. And it was completely fresh content and it was like a two hour video. And it's something people can just watch whenever they want. Like, you know, it's a yeah. one time thing and then they, they're not committed to a full series. So I thought, you know, I didn't really want to have high expectations though. So yeah, that's fair. I see. Yeah. I've seen Rendy's videos lately, his uh, really long ones that are like over an hour. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, I actually really love to see long videos. But there is yeah. something very daunting about starting his series in particular. I watched his first episode, about like 70% of it. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of lost interest a bit, mainly because it was just so long and I just wasn't in the mood that day to like yeah. continue. So then that kind of made me not watch the second episode as much because I wasn't as invested. So I think there is like a perfect yeah time. i think it's like yeah the, the thing the thing of longer format videos on youtube is that they do very well because there's just a lot of watch time on those videos mm -hmm. like in general like those videos can do really well because of the watch time like you see those full series videos right yeah that people do like, yeah, like even though people have already watched references. it right yeah yeah right those videos do incredibly well in general because um interesting youtube lost long watch time <laughs> yeah yeah, didn't um, didn't Kemp Q up upload like a four? I, I want to say it was like six hours. I don't know how long the video was. It was like four or six hours or something like that. Like this beast of a video that was just yeah, yeah, yeah. Long. He did multiple of those, I think, and they did all very well. Yeah, that's those are daunting to me as a uh, viewer. I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> this is like no joke. <laughs> yeah, I, I get. I'm really comfortable with like the. 15 to 19 minute range i'm like oh that's that's a nice comf comfy video yeah if it's any lower than 10 minutes i'm like eh, eh. but like there is just yeah i think that's a sweet spot like yeah. f 15 to 25 minutes for a progress video nowadays yeah, yeah absolutely for sure so i was talking to evie scape uh, a couple weeks ago and he loves youtube analytics and he loves looking uh -huh. at he lo loves looking at what he can improve on and things that have done well what what the results were for that are you the same way would you say? Um, yeah, I look at it occasionally, but I try to not look at numbers too much because it's very distracting. Um, like you have that like little dashboard, right? With like number one to ten, yeah. how your video performs, <laughs> and that shit is like that shit is like like if it's on one, you're like the dopamine is flowing, like no <laughs> way, my video is doing great, right? Yeah. And then it's all like on ten, and it's like fuck, <laughs> this video is shit. I know. It's so I, funny. Like, uh, yeah, like that's tr that's a tricky part about the analytics. But, yeah. you know, you can look at things like, you know, how much, how, you know, how, what percentage of the video do people watch? And like, yeah. do people drop off in the intro faster? Or, I've looked at that before, but yeah. Yeah, you don't. I don't look at it that much anymore because I know mostly, the, you know, if a video does super well, I, I check it out and see what's going on. But mm -hmm. like, usually I kind of know what's going on with a video. And I don't try, I could try to not look at the dashboard too much because that shit can really like <laughs> negative in a good way, in a bad way, you yeah, know, yeah, positively. Yeah. Do you ever look at that? Like the dashboard thingy? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, every single time I upload a video, I will look at the dashboard and see what <laughs> you check like every hour. Like, how is it doing? Like, how is oh, it? I'll check every 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm, I, I will read like the first beginning. I'll start refreshing every minute. I'll just be like, yeah, I'll be like, what, what is it at? And like, for me. I mean, I, again, it's all relative, like wh how, how big of an audience you have. But I remember back in the day where if I could have my video have 200 views in the first hour, that was massive for me. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Like, cause it used to be 50, like 50 in my first hour was like good. And then 200. Now it's like 800 is what I want. Or even a thousand. Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. best I've ever had is 1200 in the first hour. I'm like, holy, like what's going on here? <laughs> But, booming <laughs> but the uh the issue with me is i upload different styles of videos so like mm -hmm. every sebe cast is almost always number eight number nine or number ten yeah because it just doesn't have a big click-through rate some people just don't want to watch podcasts mm -hmm. but my other yeah. con so then it's like ah, i wish those were just compared with themselves in a way rather than yeah i get with that all my videos but yeah 
Yeah. No, I'm uh, yeah, I, I get love that. looking at that stuff. It's very it's cool though for sure. Yeah. I, I'm very much I I guess not so much analytics, but I really try to think well. Like I really put a lot of time into thinking about a title, a thumbnail, text descriptions. All of that matters a lot, right? So mm -hmm. I I like to spend a lot of time on that. Like it's just fun as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What? So, I remember watching you as a Twitch streamer years and years mm -hmm. ago, and then you yeah. must have gotten into YouTube. At what point did you realize like you were more into YouTube than Twitch? Because I know you still stream here and there, but it's not like um, that's your main thing anymore. I mean, I've always been more so a YouTuber, I would say, because I've made videos since 2009, actually, like RuneScape oh, videos. Wow. Like I used, I made PK videos for like years, um, and then when old school came out, I started making old school videos. Like I kind of started my channel around the time when, when like I was doing the Ultimate Iron Man. Like ar yeah. like around that time, I started making videos because I saw Settled and UAM Link at the time. Those were my two people that kind of inspired me to make videos. Yeah, and I was kind of like, well, I might just might just mess around and do some. You know, I might make some videos and just kind of get back into it like I did in the older days, like make some videos and just kind of see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I did just did that for years. And then I thought at some point I started streaming. Uh, mostly, I like the main reason I still stream today, I would say, is to do something while doing the grinds in game. Just keep me busy, talk to people like that's kind of it was kind of like always a secondary thing. So that's cool. I kind of like that. I don't know. Um and I've talked about this with many guests about the dynamic of Twitch and YouTube, where if the majority of your income is coming from from YouTube, then you can just chill with streaming. And then that makes the streaming vibes just a lot better. You're not like stressed. But if yeah. it's like the opposite, then like YouTube's like just your project, just your playground kind of. And then Twitch is like a little bit more stressful. Yeah, I think in like, at least in my experience, Twitch is probably more stressful because it's there's a lot more like like how how many subs do i get this month kind of yeah. thing like yeah i've never really wanted to do twitch as a full time like if i didn't have a youtube and i would be maybe slightly big on twitch i don't think i would ever go like do this full time mm. because twitch is just like it's so st more it's so much more random i guess <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah especially if you need security in your life that's like just not the way to go it i would say but YouTube's really yeah. cool because YouTube is a lot more secure in a way. As long as you're going to upload, you know, you're yeah. not just going to stop uploading. You kind of, you know, kind of what to expect per video if yeah. you get like a certain views or, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. A cold one asks, your one chunk at a time series is still stuck on chunk one months later. When you eventually get the last few unlocks needed to progress, how many chunks do you think you'll have unlocked when you reach another brick wall chunk? Ooh, that's a good question, actually. That's a good question. What What is um, the nearest uh, chunk that's, like, actually deadly? Have you, like... Oh, God. I mean, we could talk about this for half an hour, but <laughs> there's, like... like <laughs> A lot of people are actually saying, like, oh, like, when you, once you finish this chunk, you're just going to roll through all of Zaya and, like, you know, unlock the whole map, kind of. Like, there's nothing that's, that will take long, and, yeah. Yeah. You know? But, like, there's a lot of skilling grinds around me, and I would say the longest skilling grind that is close to me see how city is chunk because i unlock just to give like one example here like i get in that one chunk i get a farming patch which means 85 farming i need to plant the biggest seed which is a torsal seed yeah um there's a weed field which means puro puro oh uh, and i've lamped <laughs> i've lamped 17 hunter which means i can catch imps now like i prepared for that right for yeah. one the day i get that which means i have to catch a lucky imp so 89 hunter of just catching imps that's fun you can um, buy a net there right like yeah i can i get everything there to start hunter and catch imps so okay. basically catch imps until you get 89 Jesus. that's like another thing because i get imps i get a knife from a baby imp which means i have to get 95 fletching <laughs> um yeah that's gonna be fun chop locks for like one or two months probably <laughs> And then also I get a chisel and a needle, which means I have to, I don't know, like 85 crafting ads all in one chunk. So that's probably the biggest like chunk with grinds, but it's not all non RNG. So it's just like, you know, just get do the hours. Spend, yeah. Spend X time on this, get the level, yeah. continue. Um, but like, 
yeah, there's a few other things around me that will take a couple of weeks. Not as like grindy, like not that many things in one chunk. But there's definitely a lot of things around me that are going to take some time. Uh, I think the first thing I get is going to be the mining grind, which takes a total of three chunks. I have to get 90 mining for the shooting star on iron ores, which is, you know, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think the coolest part is getting all your skills. I mean, at what point will you max? I mean, mm, like, do you think well, you can max before even leaving Zaya? No, or no. No. Because you don't have air glory because you need to do druidic ritual. Oh, you didn't make that an exception. I was going to ask you. No, that, no, I wasn't no. Sure. Like, the, dude, the, wow. when I get to Tevli, I have to get 99, bro. Like, that's a fucking cape. Holy Basically, like, the, the, the one of the rules of these accounts is if there's a skill cape, you have to get 99 because, you know, you, oh, you need to buy my. the skill cape. Oh my yeah God. yeah but like to answer colt's question we're gonna suffer a lot we're gonna have a good time <laughs> it's gonna be fun to watch yeah I mean, yeah uh i think mining is gonna be the first thing and i i mean it i could roll like a chunk in every direction and it could the game could milk like chunks and get me like give me like nothing chunks like a lot it could happen but i would say between five and seven chunk rolls to get my first like decent grind which is probably gonna be mining or Winnethought or Hosidius. That's my guess. Yeah. So that's really exciting, though, in uh, a weird type of way. How many? Y you bank all your herbs. I'm I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. have you calced how much herb XP you have, or like roughly? I'm actually in a bank right now, so let me take a look. I mean, it's not a lot. Yeah. It's like I would say a couple hundred k herb XP bank right now. Okay. Um. Yeah. That, Not a lot. See, that is something kind of cool. It's like, imagine you go through all these chunks and you eventually do just have 99 herb banked. And so when you get to a chunk when you need it, it's just like, all right, time to fucking send it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think raids, like, raids is pretty far away, but, I mean, raids is super scary. It's going to take longer than this chunk, but raids would pro. I think raids would pretty much bank me 99 herb boy. Mm. Oh, so. yeah. No, it would have to. You would yeah. have to go for pet, right? Yeah, everything on a collection. Log, God damn! Including the caves. Oh, the two thousand tennis mode so, Oh yeah. So what would your plan be? Would it just be do CMs with? Okay, you could do it with people though, right? You would do group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. The I think the plan would be to do two thousand challenge mode uh, runs with like a team and just hope I get everything. Yeah, the, you, yeah. there's no reasonable. Because you get the dust from there as well, and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah work on the caves at the same time. So I think that would take like a bit over a year on average. <laughs> yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Dude, yeah. can you imagine like just making one video where like you hold off for a full year, year and a half or oh something, and God. you complete chambers <laughs> all in one video? Like, Jesus, that would be insane. <laughs> that actually that would be an be... insane video. Oh, yeah. And imagine you condense it all into like 10 minutes, too. So it's just like just beef after beef after beef. Like just every purple, you know? <laughs> Holy shit. God damn. Yeah. Um, I apologize, by the way. I got a leaf blower outside of my uh, window. Hopefully it's not too loud. I can't hear it, so. Okay. Um. Let's see. Looking through the... I, I have a question, by the way. Go for it. I'm thinking about the chunk account. Like, I know you killed... Like 20k Serechnus? I'm killing Serechnus like every day right now. So like, you've killed like 20k Serechnus, right? Yeah, 22k. Like when did you, at what point did you decide to just stop killing it? <laughs> so for me, I haven't decided to stop killing it, but um, like I still plan to do a lot of it. But I understand that metas will change. In fact, we were almost at the point where Sepulchre was going to be meta. And then they switched it. Um, yeah, I saw your video about that topic. Yeah, yeah, and things like that can just come up at any time. So I'm not like obsessed with Seracnus. I'm a, I'm just obsessed with clues. And one thing I hate is stacking clues. And so for the past almost year now, I've been stacking elites, which has just been no fun for me. Right. And uh, and that was from Seracnus, from like yeah. Seracnus, right? Yeah. Okay. And so and so killing Seracnus to just go and bank a casket is not as fun as just opening them all. And so I will be. A lot more 
interested and excited to go back to Seragnus once the poll comes out. But I also am missing so many other things. Like, I need to get an Eternal Gem. I really am obsessed with that. I need to get it. And I need to get, like, a Torva Playbody. When Raids 3 comes out, I'm going to need Masori Armor. Because Masori will be best in slot Mage, which I'll use for Seragnus. There's just, like, non-stop updates coming out that I just get distracted with Spider. So. See. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, how, do you remember how many you would, how many did you kill per hour? Uh, it's about fifty. Eh, for me, it's about fifty. I think me, like efficiently with a scythe and everything, it's like fifty-eight an hour. Yeah, but okay, yeah. what what nice. what's your kills per hour now? <laughs> it's it's like between fifteen and seventeen, which I don't think is bad. Yeah, that's really not bad with your setup. Yeah, I, I waited. <laughs> yeah, I waited with ninety-nine attack and strength too before I was really gonna like camp the boss in the, the pet in the jar, so. Yeah, I just remember your first, like the video I was watching when you were first killing Seractans, you were having like eight minute kills. And <laughs> Had like a rude maze, yeah, that was fun. Christ, that'd be, that'd be awful. Yeah. yeah, oh wait, I, this is a question I need to ask you, because I feel like uh -huh. you are one of the only content creators that is okay with it, one tick flicking. Mm -hmm. You have to one tick flick on your account. And a lot yes. of creators would refuse to do a chunk style thing simply because of that. Yeah, I guess. Is that true? That's how I see it. Because I just look at any other content creator and I would see them killing Seracnus. They would probably, like, let's just imagine Maybe. there's a content creator that doesn't know how to one tick flick. He would still well, do the grinds you're doing, but they would be just way worse because he would. Just, yeah, slower, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean. The way I see it, I mean, I mean, yeah, I kind of have to pray flick, but at this point of the game, I do pray flick so long, I don't even think about it anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah. and that's what I kind of like. You don't even complain or anything. You just do it. Ah, like, yeah, it's fun. Like, it, that makes Seracnus fun for me because, the, you know, the pray flicking is basically how I can do my kills so well, and, and that's how I can do that many per hour. Yep. So, like, I, you know, it kind of gives that challenging aspect to make something... So repetitive, kind of like fun in a way, because the better I, you know, pray flick or whatever, the more kills I can do. So I kind of have to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see you as a content creator. It's like, okay, he's willing to truly put in a lot of effort on these accounts. Because, yeah. I mean, damn, that looks, that looks tedious. Not having like prayer pots readily available at all times. Everything hey, Seracnus is bad. Have you seen Scotizo? Oh, <laughs> the, the biggest problem with Scotizo is it doesn't even have an attack rate it's just all yeah, over the place. random <laughs> why yeah why but like the, you know the thing we are talking <laughs> about right now is basically why i like these accounts you just have to do stuff in a different way and it's kind of like it makes it more interesting i guess in you know in a way and i know a lot of people that are watching are probably thinking like like why how do you enjoy doing like how do you enjoy doing this shit which i also can understand but it's just like it's kind of like a different way to play the game you know yeah like everything, like little, like weird items in this game feel like super exciting. Like the first, on the first week of this account, I was playing, I was getting hill giants, hoping for like a steel longsword. Like when do you ever like get excited about a yeah. steel longsword? Right? It's You're like totally right. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, you truly do get a just a, an entirely different experience from your last playthrough. You know, on a different area restricted account or anything else. Yeah, just like playing a whole new game. Yeah, that's uh you are also a player that is like I would consider you truly a runescaper. You love progression. It's not like you're resisting the game. Uh I know some people play runescape only for like one aspect. They want to play for PVM or something, but they hate scaling or they hate doing any actual long grind. But I feel like right. you're a genuine scaper, you know? You enjoy the grind for what it's worth. I mean, yeah, I guess I used to hate skilling, right? But that kind of changed since I've been playing these accounts. And, like, because mm -hmm. the skilling aspect also, you know, gives a really unique thing to these accounts. So, I, I just, I guess at this, I really like the grind, I guess, yeah. 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 Okay. Stigali asks, what do you consider your greatest achievement and why? This can be anything RS related or not. So, I'm going to actually just add on this. Mm -hmm. If you would like to share from IRL, I'd like to hear both. I guess achievement IRL and achievement. Right. In game. Um hmm. I mean it's probably a pretty boring answer, but probably graduating my bachelor <laughs> I guess. Like yeah. Yeah. The, the school stuff, I guess. Congrats. Uh, 
like I don't like the thing is like I, I complete something or do something and then I really quickly like forget about it and I want to do new things. I yeah. guess I don't know if you have this too, but like yeah, yeah kind of like in game or real life sometimes too. Constantly try and look for new things to do and learn. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what did you graduate in? Uh, I did a bachelor in communication and media design. Uh, nice. I mostly focused on like editing and camera work, like in real life camera work, uh, some animating, animating. Uh, I worked in like a, like I did my final graduation project in like a marketing company, marketing like section. Oh, nice. See, I actually yeah. moved to a communication major. I had switched a, nice. a couple times, but I am a college dropout. I have not actually graduated. I just started playing RuneScape a lot, streaming <laughs> it. So here, here's where I am, but that's cool. So yeah. what about in-game? Uh, I would say the Kremdoni Inferno cape. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to probably ever beat that. Nah, you well, will. maybe, but... You will. Maybe, who it, knows. You but will like... if you... Um... <sighs> I don't know if this is even on a list of things to do, but assuming this account that's endless or whatnot um do you think you'd ever kind of go for combat achievements or is that just well like absolutely insane the like, reason i say the inferno is because it took so long to practice for it right yeah like let's say i would do the same grind again i would already kind of know how to do it the the, the wall like the pvming part was really difficult the grinds itself on the account like the grinds on the chunk account, for example, they are very time consuming and you know challenging, but they that's not that inferno part. <laughs> yeah. So it's true. gonna be take a while before I do something as hard PVM wise, I feel. Um I do all combat tasks, or I try to do all combat tasks though, so on this account. Yeah, you've done all the ones you can do currently, right? Yeah, Except yeah, for, right. Wait, you can't like do the Seracnus block is like green. You have to do Scotiza with Chinchampas, right? Isn't that one that you <laughs> can't do? Yeah, and Arc Light and shit like that. I don't, yeah, I yeah. can't do those, so. Yep. But everything you can do, you've done, I'm assuming. Yeah. What about you in game? Uh, greatest achievement for me was getting my Inquisitor's Mace. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and. You, you did. I remember. Was it like. You, weren't you like speechless when you got it like you didn't believe you got the drop right <laughs> yeah so <laughs> like so good. for nine months i was grinding normal solo nightmare and it was hell Jesus. it was honestly hell God. in fact and i've said this multiple times if you don't think it's hell or you think i'm over exaggerating go kill yeah. one normal solo nightmare right now and <sighs> tell me how you enjoy that and then do three thousand of them <laughs> like go wait did you did, did you get every drop? I'm still missing an Eldritch and the Parasitic Egg from Fasani's. Ah, one of the orbs, but, I see. Yeah, I Damn, mean... Nine months for one item, is that crazy? <laughs> dude, it was nine months of hell, and it was something where I was like, I realized <laughs> at that point, like, I was about two and a half times rate. I was pushing three times rate, but, like, I realized this could take me... This could take me three years. Like, it actually could <laughs> if, if I kept going dry. Yeah. There's no saying when... that. That's, like, the fear I start getting with these grinds is, like, this is completely Dude. out of my control at this point. I could actually go eight times rate. Do you ever, like... Like, with Corp, for example, did you ever think, like, what if I go, like, eight times the drop rate? Yeah, I still have that feeling because I'm still missing an Ellie. So, Ellie's going to be one of those things I grind after raids three. And yeah. it's just fear. It's literal just being terrified of going eight times raid for something. Because I have gone eight times raid on something, and it was an unsired. I went oh my 800, God. <laughs> 871 kills for an wow. unsired. It wasn't for my first one, but it was for a... Yeah, like, it, it does happen, you know, sometimes. <laughs> it's fucking it's scary. <laughs> yep, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's kind of my fear with this chunk account, to be honest. Because I'm currently... Like, oh, like, I'm four and a half times dry on a Dark Claw, which is one in 25. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? How does that even happen? Like, you know, it's like, yep. weird. Like, you don't expect anything like that happens. But, you know, it's a Dark Claw, which is not bad. But imagine if that happens on, like, an alley. Yep. That's like, or a it's literally going to take you, like, a year plus. Yeah, or, well, yeah, I'm actually going for a Vizzy right now, so. Yeah, I mean, think I hope about that doesn't it. happen. Think about if you went eight times rate, 8, oh, 80,000 Steel Dragons, some bullshit like that. Like. God. Yep. The cool Let's thing hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, the the one thing that kind of comforts me with thinking about RNG is the fact mm -hmm. that 
you can, as much as as rare as it would be to go like that dry and stuff, but like the possibility of that happening, there's also a possibility of you getting like three Ellie's back to back to back. Yeah, like, yeah, that true. could that could happen. It's not gonna happen, but right? It could you know? Wait, so the the maze is that like the most time you've spent on one item in a game? Uh, like yeah. a grind or yeah? Yeah, I think so because that was about twelve hundred hours um total about yeah. and that and, and i include the time running to the boss as well some people can exclude that yeah but like everything nah, it's included, part of it yeah that it's part was, of your day when you're doing it so yeah it, it was about 1200 hours doing that shit and uh i mean just to put into perspective me getting that arcane from my last sigil until that arcane that was about 500 hours that was a, yeah that was a bitch <laughs> right those like bosses with like yeah, those bosses can tick hundreds of hours you know, honestly yeah Okay, Alex Percival asks, "How did Verf enjoy being on Gilinor Games, and does he prefer solo content creation or working with others like Soup and Zulu?" I'd love to see you collab with Only Trails, Tedious, and Impling Only. Um, yeah, and no, I mean Gilinor Games was amazing. I, I, lo I just love cha like challenges. You know, I just love doing challenges, getting challenged. So, and I, I really liked that I was duo. I guess. I, I I would say overall I'm I'm a solo player I guess I just do my own account just do my weird shit you know like yeah just play the game but then these collabing things like or like a video or in this case get on games I really enjoyed that aspect um, I didn't I also didn't really know Zulu too well so it was super nice to like learn like to know him yeah it was it was amazing yeah yeah they're doing a Gilinor games. Season this is season three, right? They've only done two. Or yeah, yeah, he's only done two. Right? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. he's uh, already casting out for the third season, right? Something like that. I have no idea. Planning for it. Yeah, that's uh, that stuff's really cool. Um, I know a lot of people are super into that stuff. Again, like there's just so much content on YouTube. I end up just not being able to catch everything, but I yeah. love it when content creators go into uh, getting the community involved with things. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Pl uh, Plop Zorg asks, "What is the worst grind you've had to do for your various accounts?" Uh, catch over fifty thousand horned grocks. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Never again. Um, I love how yeah, like, no, you no, have no, to no. think about it. Just no, like... no, no. I don't have to. Like people ask me this question quite a lot, and I just, the, the Grax was kind of rough. Like the the motivation might the grind was big because of luck games. That was super exciting, but catching them was so like doing that shit for like two or three months. <laughs> I don't know about that. I ignored again, I just, and then I guess uh, yeah. I guess doing Inferno with Rune Throne Nexus. I would not recommend it. <laughs> That's it. Just don't recommend. Yeah. Yeah, goddamn. Yeah. You ever uh, see the original proposal for the Zarite bow? They eventually changed it to the Zarite crossbow, but Jagex had oh, next? initially ideated a bow that would shoot three targets with one arrow. So it was basically like what? shooting. Uh, it's like a shooting like a chinchompa, but you only have three targets? Yeah, yeah it was crazy i mean i hmm. remember watching streams of people in the beta world testing it out they'd be in the inferno <laughs> and they would just start shooting the nibblers and then like you would have two creatures side um, by side and you could just start shooting them with that bow and it was shooting both of them if you'd have three would would, would, would both hits be the same damage no they would they uh they weren't like chins Fight? they were they would roll against that opponent's actual defense yeah, yeah, but like, is it like a site where the, the, the all the hit splats like half, or is it like you hit like oh, a 50 no, it's, 50? It's legit. Yeah, it's it's legit. Oh full my damage God. on it, all of them. To be like, to be completely honest, I rarely read updates. Yeah, because it doesn't like, apply to you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it applies to you. <laughs> yeah, no, so wrong. Like, I usually, care? I usually don't care. Yeah. yeah. No, that's like, totally yeah. fair. In fact, yeah, there's a right. lot of updates. Even me, that's. Rel probably one of the most obsessed with updates. I still, there's just some I just am not interested in. I won't read it. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes people like tell me, like, oh, hey, have you tried this out? I'm like, tried what out? Like, what are you talking about? I don't even know, like, 
Like, I, I don't, don't even know what they're talking about because I just haven't checked what's new, I guess. Yeah, and viewers would, like, expect you as a content creator to know everything that's going on, but they yeah. just got to understand you're playing, you're playing your thing, you know? Yeah. Do you sometimes miss not being, uh, or do you feel like you're missing out on new updates simply because you're playing on restricted accounts? Yeah, yeah, I think, like, if I, like, think back about the TOB and Inferno release, like, that was super hype on Twitch. Like, everyone was doing it. Everyone wanted to try it. You know, everyone was talking about it. Um, I guess that, that looks pretty fun, you know, to be... Same with Next. Like, when Next was released, uh, I watched I watched Rice Cup a lot. I mm -hmm. talked to him a lot, and he was, like, doing it with, like, Soda Mission, I think, and just jumping into it, and he was, like, showing it and stuff, and it looked really fun, right? Yeah. But, but then I'm like, well, I don't have any account to do anything like that on. So, what, you know, there's no point for me to do it. I just watch it and enjoy it, right? Yeah, that's cool. I do miss that feeling of, like, the fresh experience on a boss and doing it with, like, a few friends, you know? Yeah, I think I would get the feeling of missing out if uh, I were to play a restricted account for too long. It's just like... Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just... When new things are out, I want to be... A, doing it with everybody else yeah understandable so it does i think that's pretty yeah. normal for like if you're a regular iron man you're collecting all the items and as many things in the game as possible totally understandable yeah and that's kind of what i've drifted into just naturally is like uh you know sometimes some some content creators become like hardcore remakes some do fun restricted accounts some just yeah. play their main and like that's their content and stuff and uh yeah, I, I kind of see you as the in, same same category as MMORPG. Yes. You know, like try and get as many items on the account as possible, fill the collection up, and do, do as much as you can on an Iron Man, yeah. on one account. Yeah. And I, I won't lie, like I have feelings sometimes where I'm like, ooh, that would be so fun to make a, just a brand new Iron Man and do a little series. But I'm like, I just don't think I could get invested in it enough to make it worthy of like... Do, do you play any other accounts? I don't. At all? No. Okay, because I, because I, I mean, I know a lot of people that play. I, I'm never on one account only when I log in. I'm always like, I on always one have, account. Yeah. Yeah, that's like there, there's people that play accounts like on the side, right? Because if you're doing something really AFK in your main, you have you could technically you know play like a side project or something. Yeah, I and that's but, something I kind of regret. I think it's always just the grass is greener on the other side because I'm always like, oh, I could be doing more, or I could be starting a, a series on the side as a surprise or something like that. But then I'm like, well, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's well, like, I mean, I would I always recommend people to just do what you enjoy in a game. Like you don't want to do something like that if you, you know, really like diehard main Iron Man and build that character. So. Yeah, and who knows? Things could change in the future, but like right now, yep, I'm just gonna take it. If I'm enjoying right. this right now, I'm enjoying playing alone. Let's just keep at it until I. Yeah, that makes change. sense. Okay. What do you think the future of OSRS content is? Do you think that area locked accounts are becoming stale? What comes after chunk locked series? That's what Stumpy Nigel asked. It's interesting question. Um. I like people were saying like oh these like unique accounts aren't as hot anymore right but in 2009 there was this area locked boom like everyone's doing them and like everyone liked them but like even today in last year like there were several content creators that started accounts like that chunk accounts like area locked accounts they're all doing well like everyone likes them still right so I think that trend is going to continue for a while like that way of playing the game and making progress videos about it and I, I don't know if this is true, but it feels like the more extreme and stupid it is, the more people like it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people like, like to see you suffer, I guess. I don't yep. know. Yep. Or, like, I also see a lot of people say, like, oh, like, I like watching this, but I would never do it myself. So I just like to watch people do it, yep. which is totally understandable, right? So I think the future, I mean, Chunk accounts, like, yeah, recently there have been a lot of people, like, new people making them, but I... Like I said before, like there's still people doing making area locked accounts. They they are doing well, you know. Basically, every type of unique Iron Man is like pretty popular still, and I think that's going to continue. Yeah. And the, the, like I said, the the options are honestly, you know, there's so many options. There really are. We're gonna see all kinds of things with that. You know, we're gonna see all kinds of unique Iron Man in the future. 
Yeah, I wonder if there will be just a brand new category that comes out that gets insanely popular. Like, I wonder who's going to come up with that idea or whatnot, you know? I think it's going to happen, yeah. It's, it's going to be exciting because then you know everyone's going to jump on the bandwagon, join in. And uh, that would be something where I would honestly kind of be interested a bit more in a series. If some new idea that's really cool comes out and I'm like, eh, you know, I could do this for fun. You know, that kind of reminds me, though, like... Area Unlocked accounts have been around for basically ever since regular Iron Man came out. Really? Like, before I made my Karamja only account, there have been 20, 30 other people that done it, even Ultimate Iron Man. Um, but people haven't made videos about it. So, there's actually a subreddit for, like, unique Iron Man. There's, just, I did, there's all kinds of things on there, right? But, like, over half of those ideas, no one has really made videos about it, so it's not as known. Yeah, interesting. But uh, when I made the Karamja account, like, the Someone that has been doing it since Iron Man came out is someone called Karamja Only. Shout out Karamja Only. <laughs> He's a beast. Like, you look him up in the high score. Like, he, he's still playing the account, by the way. Um, he's, he's a regular Iron Man doing Karamja Only as well with different goals. He's kind of just going for high stats, right? He's not going for the Inferno. But he, made a, he had a list of, like... He has a list of every Karamja Only account ever created. <laughs> and, like... Most of them stop playing within like a month, right? Yeah. But uh, there, there have been a lot of like people doing similar stuff for years. It's just not too known to people, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd be surprised how many things are out there, but not known to the public, which might get really popular in like a year from now, you know? Yeah. Who knows? So that's so crazy to me to play an account that you're not producing content on, like some crazy restricted account like that, where it's just like, you just do it for your own fun, you know? Like, shout Yeah, out. yeah. That's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, he's a beast. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at his account right now. He's got a yeah. lot of 99s. And 52 Slayer, probably all from Lamping, I'm guessing. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. And he got one, like at level 50 Slayer, you can get a Slayer task at Duodale, right? Because you need 50 Slayer oh, and 100 man. Combat. So he got a task and he got black demons. <laughs> and he can do that. <laughs> that was awesome. Damn. And he never got a new task again. So wait, wait, aren't there black demons in in Karamja? Yeah, yeah, Brimhaven dungeon. Oh wait. So he got the. So wait, he can't. There were like it. four tasks. There were like four possible tasks he could get uh -huh. that were possible in Karamja, and he managed to get one of them. Okay, so but he did it right or something. Yeah, he did. The, he did the task, and he, and he got two slay levels out of it from fifty to fifty-two. Okay, but has he gotten his new task? Is it out? Is it no, out? no, he's not going to get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's crazy. Okay. Ripper Roo asks, how do you feel uh, about the players and series that have taken inspiration from your own? Do you think Snowflake Iron Man have already hit their peak? Or is there still a lot of untapped potential? Ooh, good question. Um, I see this come up a few times, like the wall, like the wall, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You copy this person, like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I, like when I made the Chunk account, like the Zaya version, mm -hmm. there were like another five people in that same week that made the same account because they liked the first episode. And I, you know, that's totally okay. I, like, I'm all in for it. If, even if people do the same thing, like have fun. It's about having fun, right? Yeah. I don't really care if it's. You know, if more multiple people do the same thing. Um, wait, what was the first part of the question? <laughs> Sorry. Just basically, like, how do you feel that others have taken inspiration from your own? Yeah, no, I think that's cool. Like, yeah. that's, I mean, that's great. I think everyone's, that, that's kind of the way how, like, other modes develop as well, I feel. You yeah. know, I feel we, we all take, like, inspiration from each other in a way. Oh, yeah. So. And then. Uh, I think yeah. it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. The other thing was just. Is there still a lot of untapped potential? And I think we can both agree. Absolutely. Yeah, we Absolutely. just mentioned that earlier. Right. There's, I think this trend is going to continue for a while. Yeah. And like RuneScape itself, Jagex is also implementing things based on that, like style, like the leaks, for example. The first leaks was like Zaya locked, right? Yep. You could argue that's because of the, you know, area locked. Uh, popularity oh, yeah. in 2019 had, right they had to take inspiration from that yeah yeah so okay. definitely remco asks who's your favorite dutch osrs streamer um let's see i watch a few 
Dutch. I have... Oh, there, there are a lot, but I don't know if everyone still streams, but one person I watch quite a bit is Mutz. He's Dutch on the Twitch. Mutz is awesome. Yeah. Love and Limpward, but he, he doesn't stream on Twitch, so... Yeah. I watch him sometimes. He doesn't stream a lot, but those two people come to mind. What do you think about streaming on YouTube versus streaming on Twitch? Because I, I have heard <sighs> Limpwort just say, yeah, he's not going to stream on Twitch. He's going to stream on YouTube. And I've always been like, huh, why not like do both? I, don't know. Well, I mean, I guess his audience is on YouTube, so yeah. probably it makes sense. But I think YouTube is just... The, the world chatting experience isn't the same, I feel. And I've always... Yeah. Like, also, I've always... Like, I've streamed on Twitch for, like, what, six years? It just feels weird to suddenly switch. I Also, I'm on, I'm not allowed, actually. I can't to go stream on YouTube right now because I'm partnered on, yeah. on, on Twitch. So um, I've never really thought about it, but I think Twitch, YouTube is kind of like a budget version for streaming right now. But maybe if they put more effort and time into uh, the whole YouTube streaming thing, it might become better. But I feel like it's just a weaker version in terms of like chat experience and stuff. I don't know how you feel about this, but... Yeah, no, and it, it probably does have a big uh, thing to do with just culture just YouTube culture versus Twitch culture and just familiarity in general, like you said. Yeah, just, like I, the emotes and stuff aren't the same. And Yeah, I'm so familiar with Twitch chats. But when I first got on Twitch, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, so. True, true. Yeah, yeah that's true. When you first, like, I'm curious about, I'm always curious about this. When you first started watching RuneScape Twitch category, did you, like, just watch the big guys and know and never, ever, like, watch anybody else? Or did you kind of scroll through the category and kind of look for, like, people to watch? That's a really good question because it's, like, yeah. I don't fully remember because it's been so long. But I just remember the first streamer I ever popped into was Randalicious. He was rank two overall oh, at the time. He was in his room with the, with the Vikings poster and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Was he, like, one of the top streamers uh, at the time? Yeah, yeah. He must have been pulling a couple hundred viewers or something. It wasn't the absolute top, but it was something yeah. that I just instantly kind of gravitated toward. And then, uh, yeah, I don't think I made an effort to, like, go look at the lowest viewers. I just kind of yeah. just saw the first page. I feel like that's why Twitch is so rough to grow if you're starting. Like, you kind of just there at the bottom with, like, another, you know, oh, lot of yeah. people. No, it's if you're like if you have viewers, you just snowball more into more viewers, I guess. So I remember I, I watched MMORPG a lot, and he was like, you know, at the top. Foe in MMORPGs, like the people I remember watching when yeah. I first started watching RuneScape Twitch, and I've never like watched like any like, I don't know. I've only to watched the top five people basically. That's what I remember. Yeah, that is generally where people go when they're new on Twitch. That it just has to be it. Yeah. And I've noticed lately, Twitch recommends all, not even just the top RuneScape streamers to me, but they will literally just, in my recommended channels, link the most popular people on Twitch that I would have no interest in, but they still, like, push, yeah, yeah, push yeah. them. And I'm just like... I think yeah. they are changing it a bit, though, in a good way, to re recommend lower, you know, people with lower view base, too, which is I think is, a, is good. Oh, yeah. No, they actually had a pretty good phase. And I know they still mix in. They'll, they'll mix in the very top with some streamers that actually are lower and you would be interested in. And I've actually found yeah. a lot of new streamers through that, which I got to give a big shout out to. But it's like, I, the reason I brought that up was just simply, yeah, when you get bigger, it doesn't stop. It's just a snowball effect. It's yeah, which is kind of cool in a way if uh, you do <laughs> end up growing on Twitch. I know that yeah. sounds very like fucked up to say that's good, but at least it's not the opposite where it's like they give you a bunch of publicity initially and then it, they just don't care about you once you've grown. Yeah. So. Okay. So hype for this. This is what uh, you're shy asks. So hype for this one. What was your favorite part of making the real call saga? And can we expect more movie style one-off accounts in the future? Um, I guess I kind of mentioned a bit of that earlier, but I th it was mostly just a passionate project. Like, I really... Because, well, to be honest, I was kind of... I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the account, mm -hmm. to be completely honest with the world. Like, I made a Fremenic only ultimate as, like, a side thing when I didn't have too much to do. <laughs> and then later on, I decided to do the movie thing, like I explained earlier. Yeah. And, yeah, that was kind of like a... I just wanted to always do something like that. Are you going to do another like, one, you think? I might, Yeah. 
Uh, not currently though, not anytime soon because I kind of just want to focus on two things right now. Not yeah. Because I was playing like four accounts at the same time daily for a few months last year, and uh, that was just too much. That's exhausting. That was too much. Yeah. So I want to just kind of focus like mostly on the chunk thing and then do some side things here and there. You know, some some temp some temporary like game modes, projects, accounts. If if something cool comes up or have an idea, but totally fair i might do something again in the future like that yeah yeah okay from rune crafter he asks what's your favorite grind if you had to if you had to play one iron for the rest of your rs career if you weren't content creating which type would it be so i guess there's two questions uh ultimate iron man because that's kind of what i started doing before i made content and that's what i really loved doing like, I really found, like, oh, this is, like, really what I like to play. I log in and, like, actually having... I actually really enjoy this, like, account, I guess, type. And every, like, getting I items felt really, like, satisfying. And I don't know. I first had that with the Ultimate Iron Man, I, I would say. Yeah. And then what was the other part? Just your favorite grind, basically. Hmm. <sighs> That's a difficult question. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> it wasn't the chocolate cakes? No. <laughs> <laughs> mm, let me think I, I guess it's kind of like it really depends on the account I think it's more so I enjoy playing the type of account more so than something specific on the account if that makes sense yeah okay like the whole process right now of collecting all these items on this chunk account and then with the goal in mind of rolling a new chunk that's kind of the exciting and fun part yeah I, I like doing a lot of like a yeah, combination of things. I have a question about the chunk rolling thing. Mm -hmm. So in, again, this is a, from a viewer's perspective. Whenever I would see yeah, yeah. Limpwort roll his chunk, I'm like, okay, this this can be, this could be random, but it could also be like him rolling a few times and then starting the recording when it rolls like yeah. what he actually wants. So, just, and <clears throat> I personally don't care. You could choose, you could just choose the chunk and I would enjoy it, you know? Like if you just made it yeah. choose, um, so with that whole random thing, like, do you uh, do like a live roll, or do we just kind of take your word for it and stuff? And then the other thing is, uh, d have you ever considered making a chunk account where you actually just choose the chunk? You choose your route. No, I'm like, once I roll my first chunk, I'm just gonna keep re-rolling until I get what I want. No, 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 I <laughs> don't actually do that. No. So you no, keep I, the fun I, and you keep the randomness. Yeah, no, I, I like the randomness. I am I am also going, like, I, I will be rolling everything live, by the way. Okay. Just so people can say, like, oh, he just, like, rolled this chunk because he wants it, right? Yeah. I think because I, I think part of the fun is the randomness of, you know, I don't know what's going to be next. That's the whole point. Yeah. Because if I know, to also answer your next question, I guess I don't think I would do one where I could pick the chunk because I would just pick the most optimal path to do everything. Yeah. And, and I would then, write everything down and I, you know, I have the wall plan already like figured out. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. You um, would, with, with how many months you've been in your first chunk, I can imagine you've already yeah. theory crafted your exact route to like, the yeah. next place. So that's fair. And I use a, I use a website that, you know, shows your one, two, three, four options, for example, for a chunk pick and you click the button, pick chunk and it just rolls a random one and everyone can see it. Yeah. There's no like cheat. There's no cheating it or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's uh, that whole chunk thing is just such an interesting concept. I'm glad that's like a thing now because it is just. Very yeah, cool. I'm glad they got some some love again. Who who made the uh, plugin where it like shades out the other chunks? You know, or just. Ooh, I'm not sure because it, you know, it's in Rune Light. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not exactly sure who the original creator is to be honest i love that stuff though yeah i love i love rune light man like i just yeah it's really cool <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying like i think something in like i think saddled is going to do something like that where there's going to be like a custom rune light plugin required to do a certain account yeah you know, i think that's really cool like rune light can give a lot of options as well for these types of accounts because the, the chunk the world of chunk divider plugin on Runite is pretty cool because you it just feels like you you can use the rest yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense yeah so 
That's interesting. Okay, so when your area, again, this would be like years down the line, but let's just say your ch chunk area that you've unlocked is just massive. Do you eventually, are, are you eventually rolling like 80 different chunks around the perimeter? And then like all those chunks basically mean nothing at, at some point because it's all random all the time. You mean I have so many chunks available that I can roll that it's going like all over the place? Yeah, or... yeah just kind of like... Yeah, basically. And yeah. then you just see what's in that chunk and if you can do it, just quickly do it. Because right. my whole perspective of chunk accounts is that there's always a massive grind in every new chunk. But it will get mm -hmm. to the point where you're just flying through like probably 20 chunks. Just, okay, we got to yeah, do this well, one little I thing. mean, there are chunks with like literally a field. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you can pick a potato and then move you gotta, on. You got to pick That's every true. potato. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like, you know, there's like chickens or something. I don't know. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like there's a chunk account that the most progressed chunk account that makes videos is Slay Brother. He has a, a regular chunk account. So he, he basically doesn't go for like the super rare things like, you know, Visage or, you know, like, uh, you know, super rare items. Right. Yeah. Just and he actually thing. has like pretty much like. At this point, like I would say, eighty percent of the map unlocked. So I think I've watched his like first two episodes ever. Yeah. Uh, I need to watch that because I actually do want to see how insane. That a good series is. for sure. Yeah. He do, he like, cool. you know, he went through it all. He just basically skipped the super rare stuff. Yeah. So he could progress faster. Do people like uh, that? You think, or do people like the extreme nature of stuff now? They want the extreme. I to be completely honest, I think people like the extreme stuff. Yeah. People like, you know, the harder it is, I feel the, the more people like it. I don't know. People, I don't know. Yeah. But do you, th like, do you, do you think, like, people like that extreme part? Or, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, do you think that's, I think that's the appeal to be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, it has to be. You want to live vicariously through a, a guy that's going, that's doing something you would never think of doing. In yeah, way. that makes that, sense. That, I mean, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like i've actually legitimately i've considered and it would be a, probably a meme because i don't think i'd really go hard on it eh, you yeah. know i could but i've mm -hmm. actually thought of making an ex uh what, what did i call it super extreme chunk iron man where it's like actually everything like like there's like there's no fucking around like if you can get 200 mil in a skill you have to get 200 mil Jesus. but I would, it wouldn't actually be doing that um or like i wouldn't actually make that you would but never leave your chunk I, basically <laughs> <laughs> you literally you're like you're like a one chunk locked account like, if there is even xp to gain in your chunk you have oh my to God, do it it's just insane. like super extreme but it would just be like a one episode meme thing i've considered yeah. making that as a joke but <laughs> yeah that'd, see that'd be fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you could even gain xp here you have to all right um all right i'm gonna go so i really do appreciate that you made a post on your community um, if you have, I haven't even looked at this, so, um, at all, or even browse through it. So if there's any questions you see and you'd like to, uh, let me open out, it real quick. You can ask, you can ask them. I know one thing people ask me often is how I stay, um, uh, motivated when I do this shit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, uh, I, it comes up a lot on Twitch and YouTube and stuff. Like, I'm curious about you, like, how... I always like to hear about this from other people, but, like, how do you... Why are you, so, why are you motivated doing that nightmare grind for nine months? Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a good question. It's always... It's, it's a hard question, right? It is, because especially when you're suffering. Like, you're actually suffering, but you keep... Yeah, going. like, you want to stop doing it, but you want to get this one drop. Yeah, I think uh, you just set your eye on something so hard and right. you just got to go for it and especially when you're a content creator because when you actually do have people watching then it's way harder to give up yeah it's it's kind of nice yeah like i think what you mentioned is basically my answer like the first part of my answer i always give is like you have to have a good clear goal that you're really motivated like you really you have to be motivated to do something yeah there needs to be motivation like you can just you know you can just max if you don't give a shit or like hate doing everything I guess like sometimes I see people they ask me like I'm doing this grind I'm trying to get this item but I absolutely hate doing it I just tell them don't do it then do do something you actually enjoy like 
you're gonna burn out, right? Because people ask me like, how do I not burn out? Well, it's not doing, it's doing something you absolutely hate doing is how you burn out, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, no, that really It's like, people it. see me play these accounts and they think, dude, this guy absolutely hates his life. Like, why is he doing this to himself? But I actually like, really like doing this. And it's a build up from past accounts and experience. Like I didn't just start playing RuneScape and then jump into these accounts and just yeah. kill 100k hill giants or something, you know? No. It's like a build up. I did like a normal account and an Iron Man and an ultimate Iron Man. Like I kind of just You're gave myself new challenges. So yeah. like have one clear goal, split the goals up in smaller goals. Um, and yeah, have, being a content creator helps. Oh, I'm not going to yeah. lie. Like I, can't, I can't lie. That It really does help. Yeah. It's really motivating to show pe other people what you do as well. And like, I can inspire people too. Like I, I see people common things like, oh, like, you know, I, th I look at my own grind or a thing I'm doing in a game and it's an absolute joke or it's like a lot doesn't take as long. So I'm more motivated to do it because I see you do all this shit. Yeah. Right. It's really cool to see that st type of thing stuff too. So I just like to show people the way I play these accounts, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the, the other cool so thing that I've seen is like, you will never, for the most part, you, I mean, I guess you will get to that point where you only have one thing left. Maybe a visage is your last thing. Or yep. a dark claw, hopefully not. <laughs> but like, um, <laughs> or maybe I think maybe the visage would be worse. Actually, I'm not sure. But uh, it's cool that you have multiple things that you're kind of doing. It's all one big goal at the end is to get is to move on from the chunk. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you're not just doing one exact. Bomb yeah, like in my case, the end goal is roll a chunk, roll the first chunk. That's the main goal. Mm -hmm. But I can't just start playing the account and expect to roll chunk tomorrow. There's a lot of things to do. So I split it up in small things and kind of make a plan. Yep. That's always kind of a lot of what I like. I like the planning aspect a lot as well about these accounts and the game. Like, what am I going to do in what order? Kind of figure that out and set goals. And yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of the process, I guess, when I play these types of accounts. Yeah. Like, when I roll my first chunk, I'm going to see what's available. What am I going to do first, you know? Yeah, that's so exciting. Kind of like go through that. It's exciting yeah. to move on. What do you think is the best start to a chunk account? Do you actually think Karend is probably the best? Or have you seen um, other areas where you're like, ooh, that looks well, tempting? There's no good way to answer that question because, uh, like, for example, this chunk that I'm you doing is very RNG heavy. Like, 80 or 90% of this chunk is just killing things mm -hmm. and get drops to complete it. And then other chunks are more skilling based where you comp you know chop x, x amount of locks for example like lumbridge part of the grind and lumb like part of the thing you do not on a if you start in lumbridge is you get nine of wood cutting for the wood cutting cape yeah you know it sounds simple um but you know it takes a lot of time but at least there's no rng involved yep. you chop this amount of locks you're done so it, it really depends what you prefer doing if you like the rng aspect if you like if you like skilling more you can start in a chunk that's more skilling heavy that's totally like personal preference i would say yeah uh i would say in general though the rng is kind of probably not like it can kill the series if you get unlucky potentially especially if you don't have a lot of time to play so yeah um yeah i mean i think of like limpwort I don't know what his KQKC is now. I think it's approaching 2,000. I don't think he's quite there yet. Like 1,300, 1,400, okay. I think. Yeah. yeah, I just see that. And I'm like, damn, if this guy goes four times rate of pet, that's 12,000 yeah. kills. Like, that. Yep. that is a possibility. And to think that he's only done like 13 or 1,400, it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this might take a yep. while. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing... I've had a few comments of people in my last video saying... Like, this is getting still. I'm not going to watch anymore. You know? And I mean... <laughs> I, I mean, I can kind of understand it in a way. Because it's, some of these accounts are super repetitive, you know? Yep. Especially but, if you're... Like, I, the chunk accounts. Like, with PVM, you're doing the same boss. That's it. You yeah. just need that one drop, so... So, when I hear those comments, I'm just like... Maybe you are just not into chunk accounts in general. Because I feel like the majority of people are still yeah, yeah, no, loving yeah, yeah, the content yeah. so it sucks that there's even like those comments because it's like yeah maybe this, the grinds are just not for you like this like, is the just vast too grindy. majority of people are loving the content and they don't care if it takes another year to get out of the chunk. yeah yeah, yeah. you're right because everything's different <laughs> you're right yeah so.
that's not something I struggle with though. I don't I don't make uh, limited series things where people are like backseating or saying, "Oh, don't do this, don't do this." So I don't really know the whole story, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like there's just some people that want me to roll chunks, basically. Yeah, and it's just fair. not gonna happen yet, and it takes time. I mean, that's just the nature of this account, and I can't do much about it. That's you know, that's I I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Do you see any other topics? I'm looking as well. If you'd like me to. Uh, let me see. If there's some that catch your eye, feel free. Because this is your community asking. Yeah. I keep seeing this guy comment about this potato, and I'm very confused. But he <laughs> comments like on he, this guy comments the same thing on all of my videos. I gotta know when is a chunk locked Iron Man unlocking potato? Ah. <laughs> what do you think he means? I don't know. Like wait, potato in game. <laughs> wait, where is the? I'm not even trying to look for it. Oh, I see it. Yeah. When is the chunk? When is the chunk locked? Iron Man is unlocking the potato. Yeah, yeah he comments out on all of my videos. <laughs> he really likes potatoes, I guess. Maybe, yeah, maybe you're, maybe he's using the wrong word. He just thinks potato means something else, but it doesn't. Um, <laughs> the only thing I think when I hear potato is that Jagex potato that they used for like bot busting and stuff. Just, oh like, yeah, dude, one. that was crazy. That always reminds me of stealing creation. Oh, I yeah. want that mini game back. I never played it. I wouldn't know. Uh, that was like my favorite mini game back in the day. Let me ask. But the you, rewards were busted, though. Let me ask you though. It, do you think it's nostalgia? Because I've, again, I've never played it, so I am purely just asking, uh, with no ill intention at all. But is it nostalgia yeah. that makes you like that, or do you think you would actually really like it in old school? No, I think I actually like it because they added back Soulwise, for example, and I, I'm not gonna step a foot in there. Like I don't care. Like I've played that shit so long back in the day, Soulwise, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't just don't care, right? Yeah. But like certain things were really fun. I just remember them being fun. I really liked them. And I think I think a lot of people like seeding creation. So yeah, I've I think heard that generally too. that mini game is fun, so I will hear it's the same people mean... saying they like stealing creation, but then they said they didn't like Soul Wars as much. And then I'm like, okay, like but if you yeah. had an obsession with Soul Wars and Stealing Creation and then you're not playing Soul Wars at all, then I get scared of like Yeah. Is it your nostalgia speaking or Someone someone asked um what like type of YouTubers I like to watch. <laughs> okay. And uh I actually watch so much random stuff. Like you'd be surprised. Like I watch currently I'm watching resellers on YouTube. I just find like sometimes I find channels and I just get really invested in a topic and I just you know watch their videos and it's like I watch reselling. I watch like science channels. I, I didn't have science in like school and sh like I really don't know anything about it. Mm. I just like to watch videos about those types of topics. Just things I'm just yeah. kind of interesting topics, right? Yeah. Um. That's... What about, like what about you? Do you what type of what do you watch on YouTube? <laughs> so I will listen to some podcasts that I really like. They're generally like more scientific related. Um, I really like Lex Friedman. I've even given him a shout out on one of my rambles. Not like he needs it, but um, he will talk to like people in the scientific field. He'll even talk like he talked to Mark Zuckerberg on a one on one two hour conversation. That was just like super intriguing to me. Like I really yeah. love those conversations that are uninterrupted, unedited, just right there. You know, um, the other thing I really like is uh, I guess I kind of am getting into mukbangs. I know that sounds like very. Uh, teenagerish what? Muk what mukbangs are the things where people just eat and talk they will just eat a big meal and just talk in the thing and I, i'm not like i'm not at the point Wait, where what? i'm watching uh, i think there's a guy named what's his name nicado avocado or something like that he like is eating himself to death basically i'm oh, God. not that kind of extreme stuff but yeah, yeah, yeah i like it when people are just like doing a food review or something and then they get to talk about their thoughts on it I won't even go get the food. I'm not even interested in it, but it's still cool to like. Yeah. Just it's just funny. Like you watch yeah. these really like random things and you <laughs> yeah. actually kind of enjoy it's it. The it's the randomness it's... of it. And it's like sometimes yeah. the food looks delicious. And if I'm hungry, I'm like, oh, this is going to be awesome to watch, you know? What, what about like cooking? And do you like watching cooking videos? Yeah. I oh. actually had this phase where I went through like all of Gordon Ramsay's videos <laughs> of like making oh. his food and stuff. I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like. Yeah. It, it always hits like uh, it's the same thing with Food Network. I don't even watch TV or anymore. 
uh, just uh-huh. anything on TV, but Food Network, when they would just show anything food related, I'm just like, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. pretty good topic. A, a lot of the stuff I really like as well is just RuneScape content in general. Anybody that's uploading anything, RuneScape, um, even PvP stuff. I love watching West Ham's latest videos. Yep, uh, yep. And uh, Yeah, I'm the same. I watch pretty much every content yeah. creator, I would say. Like, you know, I watch the Area Lock boys. I watch the, the PvP stuff, you know. Yeah. The Rambles. They're like, I watch a lot of different things. So mm-hmm. I love Iron Man progress things as well. Like small, small YouTubers that are just uploading like monthly progress vids. I love those. Yeah. So. True. Uh, I'm seeing a really good question here. Okay. Um, you know, one with my username. Let's see. By right, Thomas. I see it. So I'm kind of curious, but why did you choose the username Verf? And it's actually Verf, right? It's Verf, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want, well, like, I don't really. <laughs> mention it anymore it like, like, i just use it, yeah you probably it's just whatever it. you know it's like yeah yeah that's totally fair people <laughs> yeah. spell my name sadar or sador instead of sader <laughs> with me because because it seems like it shouldn't be d-e-r it seems like it should be like an o or an a or something and i'll never even correct anybody i'm just like it's sebe right your name is like sebe it's sebe but my real first name is oh. Sader. and so when people oh, try to call me by my first name sader They'll say yeah. Sadar or Sador, like they'll they'll spell uh-huh. it that way, and I'm like, eh, I don't even care. Just, just yeah, whatever. yeah. Um, for the people that don't know, Verf means paint in Dutch, and I now need to know why the reason behind that, uh, the reason behind yeah. choosing the name. So, yeah, like the, the name means paint. paint. Oh. Yeah, paint. <laughs> and the reason I call myself Paint is because <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> Okay, keep going. Like people, like people, sometimes after like, yo, do you like fucking paint walls or something? Like, <laughs> like why do you call yourself paint? I'm like, so I don't actually paint walls. I, uh, I like to make uh, like landscape paintings, like oil okay. paintings. I did that for a while. Like I haven't made one recently, but uh, the the word verve is very a very short word, and it just kind of looks nice. I like yeah. the the word verve, so I. I figured, you know what, let's just call myself Fair because I like painting. Super good idea. I don't know. That is cool. Yeah. And that, I, but yeah, that's there yeah. there's an emote of you with like the, the Bob Ross painting thing, right? Yeah. Am I imagining that right? I'm trying to even think of the last yeah, time I, can, I didn't use that emote, I can, but I can show you one of the paintings if you want. Yeah, yeah, like if it'll load on Discord. Yeah, I think I have one on uh my Facebook. Let's see. But yeah, like, yeah, that's kind of what the name is coming from. That's cool. I um, I had a pure on this uh, game at one point, and it was actually my wyvern alt that had one prayer and seventy two slayer, and I would just range wyverns. Ooh, let's pull yeah. this up. Yeah, I made that's like a jungle painting. I kind of like joked about it, and that's like oh, I, cr- I painted Karamja, you know. That was in two thousand and nineteen. I made that. That's the last time I painted, but. That's awesome. Yeah. Just, yeah that, that's where the name is coming from. <laughs> it looks like Bob Ross kind of paintings or just little dabs here and there to make the clouds and stuff like that. Yep. That looks, that's fucking awesome. Have you have you ever watched uh, Bob Ross? Oh, streams? yeah. I used it's to so watch this like stuff as a child, like really young. It would be on PBS. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a pure yeah. that I used to play mm-hmm. and his... Yep. His name was um, Mirlo Blanco, which means white blackbird. Mm-hmm. And uh, just, I always That's... thought that was cool because I learned Spanish and that was, um, there was a, a riddle that somebody made and it was fully in Spanish. And I just remember it was something about like a white blackbird, but you say Mirlo Blanco because it's like, there's no such thing. And that sounds like a name of a painting or something. Yeah. Anyway, I got really obsessed with that kind of like name and stuff so its name was mirlo blanco and i was like oh i would love the name just mirlo you know like that's like because people wouldn't know yeah. what it means unless they know spanish and it kind of reminds me of your name like verf where it's like nobody actually knows what that means really unless they know right. dutch uh, yeah unless you're dutch like yeah Interesting. <laughs> that's why sometimes people ask me like yo do you paint walls because they know the word and it's like yeah interesting um 
Let's see one more interesting question. Uh, let's see, where was it? Oh yeah, if I had any like, if I ever scrapped like any ideas, like did something in a game or a series oh, yeah. or whatever, and I never ended up like putting it out there, basically. Yeah. Have um. You? I I've done like a mini series kind of thing, but I enlisted all the videos. This was like way back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a unofficial hardcore ultimate thing where I did like bosses on scratch. <laughs> I never really like made that an official kind of series. It's kind of like a small thing, and I never returned to it. Um, but it, I haven't scrapped too much. But I I did scrap something lately though. Um, I did the um, I I tried the uh, fire cape speed run on an ultimate Iron Man. You know the the video series that Salop made on the on the fire cape speed run, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I attempted that, and I was, you know, I had a really good. So what I did on that account was uh, I did random events for for Super Restores. Like, if you give a Canentine to Dr. Jekyll, he gives you a Super Restore. Mm -hmm. So that was my way to get prayer. And I got super lucky with the prayer pots. I got, like, two on, while, like, prepping the account. And I was on run... on Like, I was ready for, like, a run. And I if I completed the cape without failing, it would be, like, a 12-hour run. Damn. And I was, like, super stoked because that was, like, a really good time, right? Yeah. And then I did the attempt, but... The thing is, I was like 30 hit points, so one tiny world spike or lack, yeah. and I can get one hit by the majors, and that happened twice, and I was like, Jesus well, Christ. like there's nothing you can do. The world was just not stable enough, I guess. Yeah. So I, 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 like, the world lacked, and my prayer just turned off for one tick, and that exact tick, the monster hit me, and it just one hit me twice. So sad. And I was like, well, I can't be asked to go in again, and the time kept, like, you know, even if I... I would have still, like, got a better time, but it just didn't feel good. Yeah. I wanted to get that perfect time, you know? I was like, wow. Well, let's just scrap the idea. Yeah, that's... <laughs> just scrap the video, there. basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was really... I was, like, kind of sad about it, but... Yeah. Yeah. There's, um... Quest speedruns that they've talked about. And I talk about this with a lot of my guests, but are you kind of excited to see that actually come to fruition having quest speed runs that you can replay and try to get the best times and do you think and the other question i have is like do you think that'll be popular content to watch mm, quests no <laughs> well i mean i i don't think i would like doing it but i guess I, i've never been a fan oh of quests. i would hate doing it but i guess as a viewer yeah. like that sounds oh, yeah i think watching it watch. i think it's fun to watch i just i mean What's the longest quest in RuneScape? Like, do you know that? I don't know, even know. Probably like Song of the Elves or. Yeah. Can you, like, know. watching someone sit through that quest for two or three hours? So here's the cool thing I don't about know, it like... is, like, th it, they won't be two or three hours. Like, these people will nail it down to, like, tick perfection, where they are, like, skipping stuff that you didn't even think you could skip. Like, they will master the quest you know and then they'll do speed runs and mm. i'm not talking about watching casual speed run and be like oh my first time doing it like i'm talking about like those world record runs where it's like i think yeah yeah i think it could be you know? i think it's fun to watch I'm uh i think i've heard you actually talk about this in one video or another where you said what if someone like literally take perfect a quest like no one can even beat it yeah we were talking like, about that then, last cast like you, you just have the perfect run like but, then what? but they're it's just like I don't think any quest, maybe Cook's assistant, but even yeah. Cook's assistant, I think, um, I can't remember how that whole quest goes down, what you need to grab, but like there has to be some sort of RNG element to it, and a, yeah. a very simple quest like that, yeah, maybe over time could be perfected absolutely perfectly, but I'm not gonna lie, there is a lot of ways to kind of speed yourself up in very non like or unorthodox ways like for example using um fire lighting to run west like you can like skip tiles yeah and, like, i think shit like i that. think the wall thing would be super interesting though like the new methods people come up with the competitive aspect of it yep. i think that would be it kind of reminds me of the wall like randy versus exact fire cape yeah. kind of thing that was going on right yeah. you know with the speed running and like the the lowest level possible and like yeah i mean i think it has potential but it needs to be if Jagex is gonna do it and needs to be like needs to work, I guess. Yeah. And I always wonder how those are gonna work out. Like, do you just have an infinite 
bank uh, infinite amount of GP to start the quest off? Like, can you just get everything you want from the GE and then set up everything perfectly? Or do you, yeah. do you all have like the same setup initially? Like that's another question. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, I do remember you saying like the biggest difference I feel if like a run is very similar is like sometimes you just can't hit an NPC and if there's yep. a monster in a quest it's super RNG so that's cool you know yeah so that people actually try and like get lucky on hits too yeah. as like an extra factor so yeah and it wouldn't affect like a total speedrun until the very end like uh like right now Inferno speedruns you can still make mistakes and you can still beat the world record but there yeah. will be a time where okay you've made a, a critical error the run is over there's no point in continuing yeah for sure i i i'm kind of into speed running like on youtube i watch a lot of speed running content sometimes when it comes up i'm pretty interested in it uh, and like people reset runs like hundreds of times right yeah thousands so i imagine people do the same with the questing like people want to try and perfect that stuff so i think that would be very entertaining to watch yeah. if there's like a leaderboard as well for it you know like an actual leaderboard with like times yeah, I wonder if it'll be like Jagex run or the, it'll be like a third party thing. I'd hope Jagex would just have their own like high scores of it and stuff. Did, did do you know if Jagex ever talked about this subject or They um so they mentioned it in the 20 like the December 2020 thing where they were kind of like ideating. Uh... They had mentioned Quest Peter, but I don't think they've really mentioned much since then. Just something that they are looking forward to doing. I see. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so I have uh, a topic for you. If you see any other ones or anything that you would like to talk about, feel free to just. Yeah, I think a, some of them covered like previous yeah. Twitter questions. So I think for the most part, we got most. Okay. Um, my main thing is. Well, again, like these questions I kind of thought of before we've already kind of answered. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. repeating in the same thing but i do want to ask um do you ever plan to uh go for combat achievements i actually just wanted to talk about combat achievements in general because i yeah. know you just mm -hmm. have no like you, like you don't even have an account like to do them on like you're, you're playing like yeah yeah and stuff. but what did you think about combat achievements and is that ever something that you would like to accomplish in a restricted sort of account mm. yeah or, i think i yeah. think combat achievements are a great addition because like, I've always been mostly a fan of PVMing content. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives you, like, an extra challenge in that department, in like a boss or, you know. Yeah, I think I think it really adds something to... It makes, like... It gives, like, a fun extra challenge when doing a boss. Like, an extra thing to look yeah, at and yeah. do. And, like, you see this collect... It's kind of like the collection log, right? Like, you see this extra, like, tap of, like, the, com the progression and stuff. I really like that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm trying to do everything I can combat achievement wise as, as long as it's realistic and possible on this account. Like, if I hit like Inferno, I'm not gonna do like a perfect Inferno or a speed run or something. If I have like Rune Throne access, right? Mm -hmm. to, like, I, I'll try and do as much as I can. Yeah. Um, like, I wonder yeah. with your chunk accounts. This is the other thing. I'm too unfamiliar with chunk accounts to understand, but is there like a point where after you've completed a chunk, everything you can do? Do you have to eventually go back to that chunk if you've unlocked something that now makes possible to do in that chunk, or do you just ignore? Yeah, it? it's it's a good question. I've had it. People ask this daily, actually. Oh, um, I'm sorry. A good example. <laughs> no, no, it's it's fine. Like it's it's very you know yeah. solid question. I always give the best example. Like the best example for me is like Champion Scrolls. Like I cannot actually get them right now because you need 32 quest points. Mm -hmm. But once I get that quest point amount, I will have to get like you know, half the champion scrolls. Yeah. So I have to go back for content I in see. previous chunks. It's kind of like you unlock, like you start small and you get more and more content, but like certain things are getting unlocked later on in, in the yes. previous chunks too. And quests and stuff especially. Yeah, and quests and like diaries and like I have like Abbey Demons and Dust Devils right now and I can't kill them yet until I get like the Slayer level, so. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to just hear your thoughts on combat achievements in general, whether, whether you thought rewards, and again, this doesn't really apply to you because you've just been so off the mainstream yeah. course of the game, but like, <laughs> what did you think about it when it was released? And then, um, 
The other question I have is just your thoughts on raids three, if you have any at all. Right. Um. I mean, I think in general the combat achievements are great. Like something nice to work on. The rewards, like honestly, like for like how many tiers of combat achievement are there? Six. It goes easy Six. to grandmaster. Yeah. So what does like what is like the difference in rewards between like medium and hard, for example? They're like very minimal. They they just give like little upgrades to your hilt, which is just teleporting you to the God Wars dungeon Places. and stuff. And then just yeah. the clue scroll buffs giving you five percent up. And that's only if you get like the like is it like one percent then two percent? No, it's like, just five percent for easies and then five percent for mediums, five percent for hards, five percent for Oh medium. really? Yeah. So wait, you... five five percent? Yeah, it's five percent better. Yeah, so um Everything, including PVM and skilling, is boosted by 5%. So, Serachnus ah. Elites, instead of 1 in 60, are now 1 in 57 once you've completed the Elite Diary. Okay, okay. I see. Yep. Yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, I don't think... I don't have anything against that, I guess. Uh, I just think it's... I was thinking, like, there's no hardcore with all the it's combat achievements there completed, will, right? There will never be a hard... I... Have I promised this months ago? There will never be a hardcore that gets a Zook helmet. Really? Stay in Why? Why is that? Why is that? They will fuck up. They w like. What's the hardest task? I think honestly, the hardest task is um the the stay below ten HP Hydra. Believe it or not, for a hardcore, for really? a hardcore, only because of the nerves, only because of like the stakes are so insanely high. Do not mess up. Do not get the acid splashed on you and like, you know. Yeah. Even if you practice twenty yeah. times on your main and get it perfect twenty times, when you're on your hardcore doing that task, you're mm. gonna be freaking out, you know? Yeah, um, I remember um Rice Cop is went for all the tasks. He mm -hmm. completed that like a few months ago and he said the T O B ones are super hard. Like like finding the people to do it with as well is like tricky. Oh yeah, so I'm thinking that, like, as a hardcore, again, group hardcore is unfathomable because, like, with group hardcore, you can't even die in the Inferno or else you lose the life. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. but even as a normal hardcore, in order to even complete combat achievements, Tebow's pretty vital. Again, not absolutely necessary. I've even seen a, a non Scythe mm -hmm. Grandmaster, but um, Jukebox. Shout out Jukebox Romeo. But, you know, you have to get all these items first to, in order to even get these speed runs and stuff. And then on top of that, without ever dying before then, and then not dying during any of the tasks, just sounds. True. And then having the skill level in general just to get all the tasks done without having died before. It's like, yeah, shit. I think, I think if I still had like an, an Iron Man, main Iron Man to play or main ultimate or whatever, if that, that's something I was like focused on, I would definitely make it like my main goal though. Because hey, you automatically also are kind of forced to get all the items to complete certain yeah. tasks yeah so i think it's really cool it's kind of like a it's like another like a new prestigious item to work on in a yeah. way so it was yeah I, I really like that type of stuff i love how uh this game has gotten very like kind of goal oriented but it makes your goals very apparent which some people would disagree with i think it's really nice though having your little profile tab mm -hmm. and you see your quests yeah. your achievements your combat and you see your collection log like I yeah. love it. I love that. Yeah, like, Solid. for the longest time, like, the Inferno was, like, the most prestigious thing, right? And now it's kind of like the Zuck Helm, right? Yeah. So, that's cool. Yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, do do went... you have everything completed? Yeah, so I got my Zuck Helm. Uh... Oh, yeah, wait, yeah, you do. I remember you equipping it, yeah. But that was something that I really had to push myself for. Because, yeah. in, and after I've completed it, of course, after like the aftermath i'm like oh anybody can get this if they put in enough time but it really it really did push me but none of the tasks were overbearing to the point of just like holy shit this is absolute <laughs> tediousness so that's why i think that anybody that plays this game a lot um mm -hmm. can get it even if you don't believe in yourself it's just practice look at the this is what i always yeah, say yeah, right? I, like like find the very hardest task you could find in the entire list and then go do that one task if you can complete that one task then you can complete everything else you know yeah because i mean yeah I, it's definitely this game is all about practice when it comes to like i mean i would say with skilling too like you 
like I used to hate skilling and never never did skilling, but then I slowly got into it and I kind of started doing longer and longer skilling grinds. You kind of start to adapt, I guess. I don't know what's the word for it, but yeah. So just... like people just underestimate underestimate what they can do yeah. sometimes. Like so, I I look I at you with your uh, Inferno journey. Your yeah. first ever Inferno journey. I just remember it was just oh my god, it that was, was so hard, you know. And you were <laughs> one of the very first Ultimate Iron Man to ever do it. I remember like UI Panda was the first. Yeah, I think it was fifth. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Still, like to think, and I, I didn't have a T bow. Right? Like I, I had an ACB, I think, and like no nothing, like no crazy like gear, I guess. But yeah, I just made really silly mistakes, and it just took way longer than it. You know, at the end, it took really long. Yeah. And then you get but the like, game, and you're like, was... oh, that wasn't even that, that bad. <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, nice. I can do something else again. But, like, that was, like, that was it. Like, now I do, like, a Zuck without messing up. That's it. But, yeah, and, like, it, it shows that just, if you put in the time, you can do it. Like, it, I see a lot of people just instantly assume they can do the Inferno because they think it's too hard. Or they, you know, they hear from people, oh, it's the hardest thing to do in a game. You yeah. know? And then but like, if you actually get into it, then... Yeah. yeah, that's what's funny is when the Inferno first came out, I was exactly that player. I was like, I will never step into the Inferno. Fuck that place. That looks so insanely hard. Yeah, now you've completed every combat task <laughs> in the Inferno. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it just yeah. You just play there this you game, you push yourself a little bit here and there, and then eventually you build up enough confidence to be like, okay, nothing else really phases me. Even, even something that's not directly skill-based. I, I think of my mace grind. Doing that yeah. grind, as much as I fucking hated it, it taught me mm -hmm. a lot, and it's given me a lot of confidence yep. to go for anything else. Just like, okay. I've yeah, yeah like I kind of just always think about it as like, a, you kind of just build a patience in a way during that grind. Mm -hmm. And now you're looking back on it, and you're doing something in a game that's not as hard as that maze grind, and it's like, wow, this is easy, I can do walk. this. It's like Yeah, you... and then other people think like, what the hell, like, <laughs> you know, like, it's kind of interesting, like, I, you know, it's, in, it's an interesting subject, because... If I look back on like the Karamja Inferno, right? That was like hard. And then I do something in this game, which is like looks really like a struggle to people. And I like, oh my god, this is like a struggle. And then I actually saw people in the chat mention things like, well, he did the Karamja only Inferno cape, so this is like not, you know, this is a lot easier. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of kind of funny. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a. Two more questions, and then I, I'm going to ask you for three shout-outs afterward. But yep. one question I'm actually going to be taking from uh, yesterday. Or wait, no, was it? Not yesterday, last week's. Maybe it was, was it Hona's cast? Maybe it was Hona that I talked to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But the question was, what is your favorite item in the game? I really like that question. It, anything. Not even anything you've ever had, but just any item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why? Um, favorite item. So I mean, I know the answer per account, but one item overall, no, I don't. I don't think I can answer that. But I guess like, I like the. I guess I the, my favorite item changes <laughs> over time. That's fair. Like when I was doing the, the the main ultimate, I really liked the alley because I was doing corp all day, and that was like the dream item. Yeah. It just kind of looks so pretty. Like blue is my favorite oh, color. Yeah. I don't know why. I always liked the look of the alley so sick yeah um and then on the kremlin account the teasing stick just funny <laughs> like you know yeah yeah this stupid stick made the inferno possible memes blah blah like yeah yeah kind of <laughs> like uh like that and then i would say the favorite item on this chunk account right now imagine if i get a jar of darkness oh <laughs> that would be cool no, I uh, I completely joke about this. So disclaimer before I even mention this, this is a complete joke. But I always think for those collection log enthusiasts out there, mm -hmm. when you're actively like going for a jar of darkness, I just think how valuable an account becomes if you got yeah. a jar of darkness early and you're like, here, I'll just sell you this one. You don't even have to do this grind later. Again, complete disclaimer. I'm against yeah. account sharing or selling. I'm just, I just yeah, find that sort of item so funny. Ridiculous amount of time. Yeah. Like the rank one isn't even drop rate, right? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. No, like, no, like oh, a little over rate. half. It's crazy. 
Nobody like, in the entire yeah. game's hit drop or hit for it. So, like, part of, one of the rules of these chunk accounts is, like, to not go for meme drops. And this is definitely a meme drop, like, the Jar of Darkness. Yeah. People ask me, like, a lot if I go for this item, but... No. It would be, it would be like, you having the potential to complete a hard clue, but they would take forever. And then you having to get, like, a third age piece to, com yeah, to move on. Yeah, pretty much. Like, pretty fuck? much. <laughs> like, um... I can get it, yes, but I've calculated the amount of hours it would take, and it's, like... 30,000 hours and then I don't even have it. It's just a chance I get it. So yeah, yeah. that's absurd Yeah So but yeah, it's hard to pick what like what's your favorite item? Do you have one item? Yep, third age bow Ooh, third that's a bow. good item. I see that's that item, item and I'm like That's sexy. That is a sexy item. Yep. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, The artist that made the the original third age pieces is a genius. Those all look just fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. The third age items look so pretty. They're so good. And like, like the they're all very unique. Items. Yeah. Like I even think of um and again, I kind of exclude the druidic set in this. Of course I like it and it looks nice, but that's not really the original. It's more math. It's not like I don't know. Yeah. It just doesn't have that like nostalgia to it as well. Yeah. I think, I think that's the main reason. I think the maid stop looks Really good. And the kite shield. Everyone loves the kite shield. Come on. Yeah. Now, I mean, kite shield was my first piece, and I flipped. Ah, oh, that looks so good. I was just screaming. Yeah. Uh, but the, like, I even think, yeah, like, the, the mage looks amazing. The range top with that checkered, like, white leather kind of design. Like, damn. Yeah. It's just but I, um, Yeah, I guess, I guess to answer that question in one answer, I would say probably still the alley, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be on. Like, I, I don't know. Seeing myself have an Ellie on a chunk account or something, that would be so cool. Oh, well, yeah. any, or any unique Iron Man, like <laughs> having an Ellie, that's so cool. So cool. Yeah. I always kind of hoped I'd be that that guy, you know, that gets an early Ellie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still have a chance. I could still get an early Ellie. I'm like 500 kills away. I, are you planning on doing more Corp soon? Uh, yes. I will eventually want to go for my Ellie, but I'm going to wait until they release the 50 damage cap. And they, uh, a lot. Are you not afraid that, me. like, are you not afraid they would reintroduce a divine? I am afraid of that, but there are a lot of things I'm afraid of with this game with devaluation of things. Yeah. But you just can't think of that way because it'll just ruin yeah. the entire game for you. True. True. Like, yeah, it's. I just, I even think of, um, me opening caskets or me killing Scotizo. Somewhere something where like, oh, if you kill Scotizo, then like three years down the line they're gonna reduce or they're gonna increase the jar of darkness to one in five hundred or one in two fifty. <laughs> and it's like, damn, I just wasted all of those totems, you know. But you Yeah, that's you fair. You can't really play that way or you're just gonna drive yourself mad. Yeah, you're gonna like hoard everything and think about all those little yeah, things. It's not fun. You just yeah. won't enjoy the game. True. Okay. My last question is, Verf, where do you see yourself maybe in real life or in game in five years from now? Twenty oh, that's always That's a, always a tricky question because I try to not think too much into the future. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope the game is still healthy and like doing good. You know, that's first of all. Yeah. You know, I hope to see this, this game still going strong. Like, it's crazy. It's been out for, like, 20-plus years, right? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's but, yeah, I, that's the first thing. Like, I hope I can... It would be amazing if I can still do what I'm doing right now, you know? Because if, if this game dies, which probably at some point happens... It'll, uh, die, with, have... it'll, it'll die with our generation. We'll, yeah, We'll yeah, live yeah. a long and fruitful life, and then it'll die, you know? <laughs> right, like, yeah. Um... Like, I, I, I work a normie job, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It, I, I, you know, nothing wrong with that, by the way. Like, I, <laughs> totally, like, totally cool. Uh, like, I, I would look, I would be working, like, a design job or something, which would be cool. Yeah. But that's always, like, the backup plan I have, I guess. That's you know, if it doesn't work or something happens, you never know if the online world, to be honest. Like, you know, YouTube or Twitch could have some major setback or hit within a year and everything go collapses. Yeah. In terms of content creation, you never know, right? Yep. So, um, yeah, I hope I can still do what I'm doing right now. And in real life, I mean, I'm living a pretty good life. I think I would, I would probably have a kid with my girlfriend. Wow. 
That'd be crazy. I think, yeah. I mean, we would. I would be. I'm currently 27, so I would be 32. There's a good chance I have a kid. Yeah. Uh, are you gonna make him? So, uh, are you gonna let him make a chunk account? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no you can't uh, I, I think i was talking about this earlier i was like if you have a kid you can't uh -huh. persuade or like remove the idea of playing runescape from them you just have to let them live their life if they want to play runescape go for it oh yeah but you can't yeah if you I like say you can never play this game you'll get addicted then they'll then they will play it you know? yeah if you uh what's the word for them tell them they can do something they will do it yep <laughs> yep. yep that's how it works <laughs> yep so yeah, real life, you know, just keep doing, keep grinding the game, That's awesome. have fun, you know. Cool to hear. All right, Verf, I'm going to ask you for three shout outs now to wrap up uh, this episode. Really enjoyed it so far, but let's uh, let's get three shout outs. For Sounds good, yeah. Time. Was a lot of fun. Um, three shout outs. So the first one, it is still International Woman Day. So I want to give a shout out to my, for my girlfriend because she always supported me through this as well so Aww. she's amazing um so shout out to a content creator i want to shout out exact oh, he's yeah. a great guy and he's done amazing things really uh inspired me with the bull inferno thing the lowest common inferno cape and you know yeah. great guy um and I think the third shout out goes to the churn community because just really involved with that lately. Slay Brother and Original Chunker and yeah. There's a lot of new extreme chunkers up and coming, so Hell yeah. Uh really great community. Now having a lot of fun on this account, like it's just really fun to find something you truly enjoy in the game and just yeah. Yeah. The chunk concept is really cool, so shout out to the chunk boys. Hell yeah. Verf, it was an absolute pleasure having you on. And uh, for those that haven't watched Verf's content, I would highly encourage you to. Just fantastic, high quality, and super long grinds within a tiny, short amount of time. So you can just enjoy it and enjoy it. A hundreds of hours of progress being done in one episode. <laughs> so guys, go check them out. I'll have your YouTube linked. If you you said you have a second channel, I mean, do you want like all of them linked? Because I'm I'm totally cool. nah. Just, 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 just your main the, one. the other channel is just like an old channel I used to upload PK stuff on. So just a main channel. Okay, we'll yeah. have that. We'll have your Twitch and Twitter. Is there any other like Discord links or anything you'd like me? Only fans? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on the cast. It was my pleasure, man. It was yeah, really um, nice talking to you. Yeah, keep up the grind, dude. I uh, look forward to your future episodes. Everyone, go follow Verf. Be sure to. And uh, next week, I have not actually announced who's going to be on the cast. So, oh, wait. Should I just announce it? I, I'll just announce it right now. Caveman Ooh. only will be on the cast next Let's week. Let's go. Yep. He's one of the people that inspired me to do the unique Iron Man stuff. So, yeah. Caveman, Great guy. Great Caveman guy. only is an OG and he's a legend. And we will be talking about the Bard skill. So, if you guys have already formed uh, your own opinion on the matter, I I have too. So, you know, let's just be honest with each other. Let's try to come into this Sebe cast, this next Sebe cast with an open mind. Um, he's going to try to explain the Bard skill. He's already done it on his stream once, but I don't know if everyone is there. But I want to talk through the skill with him. So that'll be the majority of the cast. Of course, I'll talk to him about other things and your guys' topics. But I'm looking forward to it. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. So have a great day. <laughs> yeah, have a great day, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.